Me bust it, bust it. Hey, y'all. Hey, I haven't seen Jonathan in a while. Jonathan don't get paid to come to work, so he just show up when he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you look young and you look great. Look at you. You're like, ah. <laughs> it's been a roller coaster. And I mean, the roller coaster, fine, well, finally somewhat landed here yesterday. So getting right off the plane, right into a family barbecue. So it was, I mean, oh, wow. I mean, and the family's quite big. So it was, it was quite an intense time. And I, it took me like three hours to unpack last night. <laughs> I was passing out in between. <laughs> so it's been quite an interesting journey, most definitely. And now I have to absorb and contemplate and, and ground the experiences and and everything is just lining up you know like you know what we were talking about and there's just more there's more gems along the way right that you just like oh that came out of nowhere so i will share more you know? more more to follow huh more to follow mm -hmm. more to follow mm -hmm. well terry is here with us. Um, we got Jonathan, the first lady, Erica. We got Terry over here on the wheels of steel. Like, <laughs> all flewed out. All flewed out. Wait till you guys find out. We're all flewed out, huh? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so exciting. I'm trying to make this so that when we're talking, the, the screen changes and I'm not, I'm not having that. Weird. Okay, so Terry, uh, Terry and I were talking today. So I'll pin me. I'll just pin me right now. So because I, I gotta get you involved in my madness and my nonsense. Because I know Jonathan be like, you need to worry about other things, Erica. Just be free. <laughs> I'm like, no, because I saw it and I gotta say something about it. So get it out the system. Get it out the system. Get it out the system. <laughs> So today, this was so funny. I, I might even show it on my page, but we're trying to figure out why black people are offended, white people are offended, redhead people are all offended. Everybody's offended. And why? Okay, so today it was Caucasian seasoning. And so <laughs> on the shelf, it says Caucasian seasoning. I'll find it for you. Cause I like stuff like this. I think it's freaking hilarious. But anyway, um, so someone was offended and they said that is like Soylent Green. Soylent Green is people, right? You remember that, right? That movie Soylent Green? And they yeah. said it was people. So evidently she thought that since it was Caucasian seasoning, it had to do with basically saying white people seasoning. But you know, that's not what it has to do with at all. It has nothing to do with white people's seasoning. Um, I wanna go find it, but who cares? Okay, so, so I, I was like, well, I know what Caucasian means. A lot of people don't know what Caucasian means. They think the word Caucasian means white. Do you know what it means, Jonathan? Caucasian? Mm, nope. So we're going to do. Sounds like a blend, a blend. Boom. Look at you. Check out the big brain. You, you mm. can see it? Yeah. Yep. I was on top of it. So Caucasian, I, I had to tell her like Caucasian is not, doesn't mean white. Like it can include white people whatever you want to call, whatever that means. Cause I hope people know like these words are like made up words from like the 1700s, mm -hmm. you know, 17 and 1800s. They, they, they come up with these classifications cause you got the black laws and, and the word black and the word white. Cause before white would be like um, positive energy vibration. Black would be dark energy vibration. It wouldn't be people's color to skin. We didn't have these races, right? So this is in the 1700s, they established this thing, the Caucasian race. And so these would be people in the Caucasoid mountains, right? And so there was Caucasian, Europid, and then there was a, a Caucasian, there's Mongoloid, and then there's, 
or cauc caucasoid, mongoloid, and negroid, right? But the, cauc the Caucasian people would have been, oh, it's right there. People in the Caucasoid Mountains. So this would be like people in Russia. There's these countries, I can't even name them. They're just in, in the main country is Georgia. And so it shows it's 50 ethnic groups. So you were right, it's a blend. Look at this, it's like all of Russia and down wow. below Russia into Iran. It includes the top of Africa. <clears throat> the Black Sea, let's see. And so somehow in America, it's become the meaning of the word white. So there's this season and here it is. And it was called Caucasian spice, but it really just means the spice from that region, like Asian seasoning um, right. or African seasoning. Wow. And so it was like, this isn't funny. This is rude. This is not fair. <laughs> and it was like, okay, <laughs> it's, it's not really what you think it is. But I feel like sometimes people are looking to be offended, but we, we, we spend so much time lacking understanding of words. Just like Kamala Harris is Caucasian. People don't know that, but she's Caucasian. Why? Because her family is from the area beneath, which includes Asia, you know? And so it's Caucasian, you know? So Indian people, I don't know if people know that now in the census, Indian people are a part of Asian. I, people from Iraq, Middle Eastern or Arabic people are now Asian. Hmm. That's the classification. So I posted this about the dog, the Caucasian Shepherd, along with all the other stuff. Just, hey, let's just have a discussion about the word Caucasian. So then someone said, hey, are we eating dogs? And I said, what? Did you read the whole post? We, we're not eating dogs. We're just discussing the word Caucasian, you know, a Caucasian shepherd, like a German shepherd. Mm -hmm. So then another black person comes. So this is to non-black people. I'll just say that. And then a so-called black person. I say so-called because I, I really think like, uh, you know, African-American, black, I don't know what, what we need to be right now, but people. But uh, she came along and she was like, offended now, you're offended because the dog is called Caucasian. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like if somebody saw Caucasian seasoning and they're offended as a white person, they were offended because it's called Caucasian. And then now the black person's like, well, what the hell? We, <laughs> we got black people seasoning, white people seasoning. Well, we don't got African-American seasoning. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's a place this is a real thing, like this is a place, like a German shepherd, right? It's a Caucasian shepherd. So unfortunately, everybody just thought it meant white, but I, I mean, the bottom line for me, me and Terry, I was like, oh my God, my chest, I'm so tired this morning because <laughs> I don't, I don't, everybody's like looking for a reason to be offended. But the problem is, in America or I guess modern times, like the word irregardless, that's not a word, right? But people right. use it incorrectly for so long that they put it into the dictionary. Do you know that? Not to know that. Yeah, I wrote about that one time too, because I was like, irregardless really isn't a word, but it is now. But when we misuse a word or we substitute a word so much, we now change the meaning of the word, but now we can, it just leaves more room for miscommunication. Cause I know they would call that antiquated or what do you call it when the word is no longer relevant? Well, I think antiquated would probably be a good word for that, but I'm not sure if that's the right word for it. Right, it's, it's something similar to that. And so while we, considered the word that like someone who lives in England or maybe somebody who lives in Sweden might use it differently. And uh, we've gotten to the point now too where we're communicating with people all across the world and we can't be too quick to be offended. We have to ask people what they mean or what they thought or, 
or why did they say things so that we really understand what it is that they mean. What they, what's that saying when you when you assume something, you make an ass out of you and me, right? Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, yeah. We just have to pause and observe for well, go to the two side to the two sides. You have yours and then okay, what okay, what did they actually mean? Maybe I'm overstepping, right? Yeah. <laughs> And I think, mm -hmm. you know, I was just going to say, people are so easily offended these days by what other people say and how they've put the word, uh, put it into meaning. And, it, you know, it, it even goes back to us texting. Well, Ooh, what did they mean by that? You know, you've got how many characters can you text with and you're going back and forth and all of a sudden people are, are, um, assuming things by the words or how you've responded to a text and they're taking it out of context right and so every time you type something you've got to be you're not sure whether you're going to offend someone because people are going to be offended by everything and I think that's that's the that's the bottom line of the whole woke community is everything everybody's offended by everything else and it's like, oh, my gosh, you're eating beets? That's red. <laughs> Big deal. Big deal. You know, like, are you are you a racist because I'm eating beets? Or I, I like, I happen to like, you know, like white potatoes? Does that make me a racist? Girl, why are you always eating white potatoes instead of red potatoes? Or I could be offended because you said red potatoes because... Are they was Native American? Or <laughs> red potatoes? Surprise! <laughs> Scott, you look absolutely fabulous. Like you just got your hair shaped up and what's up? What's up? You just got tightened up. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on. How you doing? Good. He's always helicoptering in. You have you met Jonathan before? Jonathan, I might have I might have seen him around. Just yeah, I think it was briefly. Nice to meet you. Nice to finally get there. Something's creep going crazy on my video. <laughs> Jonathan's got too much spirit power. He all blowing up on the screen and stuff. Woo! <laughs> uh, <I know. laughs> Go it again. We're just kind of shooting the breeze because we were we were gonna hang out with Tyler this morning, but I think he might have got hung up on something. But so we were just talking about the word Caucasian. Mm. Because there was a, a picture of a Caucasian seasoning and the young lady was offended because she said, this is white people seasoning. So the black lady was offended. The white lady was offended. Both of them don't know what Caucasian means, but they're both offended. Mm -hmm. So that was like a fun, interesting thing this morning. No doubt. Well, no doubt. What, what, do you, what do you say Caucasian means? Well, it's a region. It's a part of the, uh, it's, it's like Russia and below down to uh, Southeast. Is it? No, North. It would have been Northern Asia through the Middle East and Northern Africa. So it's all these countries. It's like 50 countries, 50 different ethnicities included in it. So people just kind of assume these days that Caucasian means white. And it's like, no, it's the Caucasoid Mountains. That's the area of the world. You're not running from yeah. the police, are you? Say, say what? No, 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 no. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Please don't be offended. <laughs> you know you're a black man, but don't be offended. I just, I like to make jokes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only if I eat in front of you and I don't, you know, hook you up. So the other thing we were talking about too is I shared a, a link with you all about bugs, right? And people are like really, really alarmed now because of the bugs that's inside our candy and stuff. And I don't know, did anybody have any thoughts on that? Because I think people are scared they're going to eat beetles now, now, now that they've talked about making food out of bugs. 
people are like on extra alert. But I think the Food Channel has been talking about eating bugs for like a super long time. Yeah, well, the, the only the only thing is, is they're farming bugs now, and they're making bugs into. It's not part of. They're making flour out of crickets, and and people are people can be really sick from the bugs. It's one thing mm -hmm. to have bugs, you know, that are astray in your flour, but it's another thing to be making flour out of bugs and adding it to the food system. So there's a difference in it and a certain amount being in the system to actually making stuff with it. Yeah, it might not be the exoskeletons. Yeah, it, 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 I think they're trying to get everybody to get a taste for it, you know? <laughs> if it's already up in there, they got, it's already in their taste buds, maybe. I don't know, man. But this bug thing, they, they really are on it. They're trying to, they, they want us to eat bugs in about 30 years and nothing but. I heard it tastes like chicken. Bugs. <laughs> you said it tastes it like chicken? It tastes like chicken. Were they dusting uh, chicken seasoning on that stuff? On yeah, the I don't know. Seasoning I was that? just teasing because, you know, they say like random is like frog or octopus. Like the creator didn't have another choice. So they was like, just make, just make it taste like chicken. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> chicken fried chicken. Chicken fried cricket. I don't know. Uh, now, now that Terry's done, now that you say that it can make people sick, I didn't know about that. I, I had no idea about that. Yeah, people have so many allergies and, and they cannot, I think there's a type of an enzyme within some of the bugs that, that our human body cannot digest. So it will make people really, can make people really, really sick. And so, you know, then you end up having a society that is being poisoned, mere tox, you know, the toxicity of them, and, and people can't digest all of that stuff. And and so, and they keep adding it on to, into our, our food system, and people are sick. Yeah. Well, that's definitely a thing. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. See, because I, I I know that the candy coating of an M and M is shiny because of bugs, right? And then there's certain coffee where <laughs> bug poops it out, and this is like the best coffee, the most expensive coffee. And then uh, you know, but people want that. But then also too, in the factories, the FDA or is it the FDA? Yeah. They have decided that you can have a certain amount of roach legs and a certain amount of rat tails inside your food because it'll be impossible for the factories to completely clear and free of bugs in most cases. So they've said, you're allowed this percentage. If it goes over this, you know, we have to shut you down. But other than that, expect a little bit of rat tails, a little bit of roach legs, expect that in your food. But I don't think people have known about these different candies and things like that. So it's like really alarming. And it didn't, it didn't really alarm me that much. Cause but, but, well, you know, but one of the things is like the food dyes, right? There's that, I, and I don't know the name of it, but it's the, one of the red food dyes mm -hmm. is made out of, it's made out of a certain kind of a beetle. And people are very, very allergic to that red food dye. It can make them very sick. But, but a lot of people don't realize that, that it's from that food dye. So if you, it, you know, when you're looking at your list of ingredients, how many ingredients can you pronounce? <laughs> you know, and when you're, when you're looking at all that, then there's a lot of chemical synthesis in, in all of that stuff. And it's not natural for our bodies. And so we, we react in different ways. Yeah, I used to tell people when they go shopping, if you're allowed three names, three names that you can't pronounce. If there's more than that, you got to put it back. You yeah. know what I mean? And they have to be, they have to be near the back end of the list. Yeah. yeah. They have solid ingredients in the first three to four. But if yeah. you don't actually. Yeah. And see, people have a misunderstanding about food. Like they think all bread is bad. You know what I mean? 
It's not the bread that's bad. It's the bromine that they put in the flour. So it's the bleached flour that's bad. So if you use organic, unbleached flour, you see a big difference in whatever's reacting in your body to soak what you think is bread. You know what I mean? Yeah. People are, are not alert to bread all of a sudden. People aren't having aller- allergic reactions or autoimmune issues from bread all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. These are really vaccine injuries that are irritated by chemicals. And bromine is one of the main chemicals, and they use it as a non-taking agent in flour. Okay? So people don't know about bromine, but it's one of the biggest ones. So when people say they have a gluten allergy or something like that, it's not really gluten. It's, it's bromine. <laughs> it, 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 see, they have us fooled with different words and stuff when it's really all about the chemicals that are putting in our food. That's like with everything. Not, like the cigarette I'm smoking now. People say, oh, you're smoking cigarettes. Well, I smoke organic or natural cigarettes. That, that oh, wow. All... So I can stop yeah. judging you behind your back. That's what I'm saying. And, and <laughs> these, this cigarette, people have been smoking tobacco for thousands of years. The Native Americans smoke mad tobacco. You know what I mean? But they, the cigarettes that most people smoke, let's say in Newport, it's only two thirds tobacco. The other third is cardboard sprayed with a whole bunch of chemicals, shredded up and mixed with tobacco. Right. Yeah. Okay? It's not. It's not the tobacco that's making you sick. It's, it's the not. fucking cardboard shredded up, sprayed with chemicals that's making you fucking sick. You know right. what I'm saying? Reason and all that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like I said, people have smoked cig- uh, 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 tobacco for thousands of years, and there was no such thing as cancer. Uh, nobody was having any problems from it at all. You know, it wasn't until they, <clears throat> they get their hands on it, like they've gotten their hands on everything. Our food, our water, shit, fucking even our air. You know what I mean? They, they have their chemicals in everything. They're trying to poison us, but you see, human beings are so resilient. I, I, I don't know what the end goal is, but I'm sure, I'm sure they thought we'd all be dead by now. <laughs> That's for sure. Hmm. I'm just, I'm telling Eric, uh, Tyler, he could just pop on as a, as a, a surprise guest. So. <laughs> yeah. okay. so, so, so then Scott, what are you going, what would you say about all of the uh, chemtrails that have been in the air? Like what we, we see so many of these mm, theories about what they are. Um, do you, do you think that, that they're there to um, sort of keep us at a certain level? Well, I think, it, well, look, spraying stuff on us has, has always been a thing. I remember William Tompkins in his book, he had that picture of a uh, 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 decloaked reptilian ship spraying shit on a, a whole city. You know what I mean? So they got this from them. And they've been doing it for quite a while. So as far as what they're putting in uh, up in there in the sky, I think it could be a variety of things. Yeah. I can. I mean, I think it's whatever they need at the time. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be surprising if, it, if it's not spraying vaccines in, in, out of this, you know, or, or or the nanoparticles that are in these vaccines. You know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. They, they they have multiple agendas, and they and and they have. See, I think in, in, in the technology and or the, the infrastructure that they already have in place, I believe goes to the highest bidder. Whoever's going to pay the most to use it, that's that's the way these people work. You know what I mean? That's literally how these people work. They work on a a a a a, 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 a bureaucratical monetary system that is not native to this planet. You know what I mean? None of, none of the way we operate economically is not native to this planet at all. It all comes from them, you know, like movies, when you see movies like uh, <clears throat> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe or to the Galaxy, you know what I mean? You see, and you see all those, those guys and how bureaucratic they are, you know what I mean? That, that, that's really their shit that we're mimicking down here, okay? Or, or if you watch uh, uh, Jupiter Ascending, when she's going through like the MVA of, this, of the galaxy, you know what I mean? all that bureaucracy she was going through. That that's that, that was like going to the NBA down here. You know what I mean? But put in put in space and that's just real. This is not we didn't create this system. You know what I mean? This is 
we 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 put our spin on it. That's for sure. We put. I'm sure we've taken it to a whole new level of greed here on this planet. You know, but but at the same time, all this bureaucracy. This is how they operate, or at least the evil ones do, or at least the ones that we're dealing with, or the ones that are keeping us enslaved. Should I say? I got skipped. <laughs> I had to go back to the to the bread though. When when there's the bromide, but then there's the fact of wheat germ. The wheat germ is taken out. Like the wheat germ is the part that's good for you in the bread, but they take that out and they sell it separately. Well, absolutely, not nutritious, not poisonous. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, not, and not only that, we, we I haven't even taken account of the GMO. You know, this is what we're talking about mostly GMO wheat. You know what I mean? Along with the GMO corn and the GMO soybeans. I mean, they put literally, they, those are their magic elixirs. Uh, it's high fructose corn syrup and fucking uh, 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 soybeans. They put that shit in everything. You know what I mean? You'd be surprised how much shit has soybean oil in it or, or processed soybeans. When you just look at the fucking thing, things that you were ate as a kid or things you used, you, you think were good, you look at the fucking ingredients list, you're like, what the fuck? The first ingredient on there is soybeans. You know what I mean? The first like, ingredient is corn syrup. There's that, and then the big factor of the GMO thing is the things they inject in it because they're like, oh, well, lizards have protective thick skin. Well, maybe if the beans have thicker skin, it'll protect itself from the plants, you know, like from the pests, right? And so they're like, oh, and they want to take these certain qualities from certain other, like uh, certain plants, they have something injected into them so that the bugs will die. But of course, you know, now you've put this in my body and I'm eating it. And normally this would be something on a, you know, on a non-edible and you've put it on something edible and now you've changed who I am because of it. But give me five minutes, I'll be right back. Yeah, go for it. I was even I thinking mean, about the, the amount of acceptable pests because I, I didn't know too until one day, you know, the grits was walking away. That this, you know, that there's bugs inside the grits. <laughs> But if you leave it there long enough, they'll hatch. And those, I'm like, oh shoot, the grits are walking away. Look at them; they're just like, I quit. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, um, I was just trying to find. There was a, um, a video, and they were looking in a telescope on uh, Frere Rocher's. Oof. Right. And they had, you saw that, right, Terry? I, I yeah, actually, been... I posted that a while ago. Okay. Is it? And it yeah. Was, yeah, and there's there's parasites that are crawling through that thing, through the through the actual the hazelnut filling that they create. Yeah, so it's it, uh, there's so much so much out there that they just and they cracked up new packages and new packages. They used the white and they used the regular, and they used all the various flavoring of the new flavors, and they all contained. What is this we're talking about? It's a as a candy? Frere Rocher, the candy with the hazelnuts in the middle, and it has like the, the nougat. It's uh what's so, that? Oh, the what's gold the ball color? that sits in the little brown yeah. thing. It, it has the Nutella and then it has the wafer shell over it, and then it has little uh crunched up pieces of hazelnut all around in a, a chocolate coating. Yeah. So parasites or worms? What is what is it? Well, they look like well, micro- they? Micro- microbial, right? Microbial. So, so if they're microbial, they're probably more of a parasite. They're mm-hmm. worm anyway, but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I was telling Terry this morning about how all these these kids ended up getting E. coli and that wasn't, it was just happenstance. The apples that were being picked they were not, what is that word? Pasteurized. So they didn't pasteurize the apples and they made all this apple juice for the school program and all their kids, like kids were just getting equalized. Some kids died. And what it led back to was that the apples were being picked off the ground by the workers. And they was near a field of deers. 
And so deer droppings got on the apples and it just led to this horrible thing. And I used to even think when it comes to the cigarettes, like Scott was saying, is it necessarily that somebody really was trying to kill you with the cigarettes? Or I don't know, were they trying to formulate some type of flavor? I mean, when you think about the fact that it's fiberglass in there, I'm like, I don't know a reason why we need to put fiberglass inside of anything. Well, wasn't it, there was fiberglass at one point that they were putting in uh, in that. I mean, there's there's a tobacco plant, an actual plant that is just the plant of tobacco tobacco and that's that's that that's what the that's what scott was saying that's what was the indigenous they were using like there's there's essential oil that you can make out of the purity of the plant you know and so there is i mean there is that agenda and then they what all the cigarette companies then what went and bought general mills and all these food companies right so they just started to sprinkle down and put their 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 poisons within the food the processing food so yeah and i was just having a conversation the other day i was with with uh actually i was dropping some bombs on my dad <laughs> and i just came back to it and he was talking about you know not eating a lot of meat this and that i'm like hmm you come back to it what were what were our ancestors i mean you call it hunters and gatherers so the majority of our food was meat but it's just, you know, what's, how, how are they being treated? What are they being fed? You know, how are they being kept? And that, that will chance, that will, you know, taint all of that and poison us. So there's this term called chasing the devil with the witch. Have you heard this before? No, I haven't heard that. So chasing the devil with the witch is like you exchange one bad for the other. Yeah. And so I know people are like, hey, I'll drink, I'll smoke black and milds instead of cigarettes or I'll vape instead of cigarettes. And each one is worse than the other that people think, oh, well, I can get off of nicotine if I if I smoke black and milds. And they don't know that black and milds has like three times more nicotine than than the actual cigarettes does and vaping. I mean, there's a thing called popcorn lung. Have you heard about that? Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, Briefly. Do you know about it? it? Yeah, when you vape, you get this thing called popcorn lung. It's like a condition where, I'll just look it up because it's- Right, you know. look it up because yeah. This is like four or five years ago. I think is this after they started doing the, the research on them. I recall somebody was telling me that. Might have been Angela, actually. What? How do you know you have popcorn lung? You have a dry cough, shortness of breath. Like you, it's like you have little, like little polyps bubbles. in your lung. Like yeah, like air bubbles in your lung now, and so because of it, let's see, you have these symptoms of coughs bringing up mucus, shortness of breath, wheezing, tiredness, fever, night sweats. Skin rash. Yeah. Popcorn lung. Ah, uh, there's some closing of the tightening of the, mm, the vessels. The, yeah, yeah the airways yeah. become smaller. But I'm sure there's a better reason why they calling it popcorn. Maybe it's like when people get you inhale popcorn and you, you, you choke like, on popcorn. Oh my god! And it's like toxins <clears throat> associated. Okay, ammonia, chlorine. Hmm. Remember, have you ever done this? Like mix some bleach and some ammonia, thinking you were really doing some cleaning work. I did that once. Me too. When I was little, I used to be a chemical queen. I told you I used to be like a little mad scientist and that little smoke would come out. One time I lit a Tylenol on fire until this this yellow thing of smoke came out and it went right up my nose and I was like, woo! Whoa. <laughs> I've, I've done some things. So <laughs> One time 
someone fussed yeah. at me for burning some stuff in the yard because I like to burn stuff and I have to like be careful how I do it. Hyalur- hydrochloric acid, mustard gas, CS gas too. Like we played with CS gas in the military. So yeah. So trading the devil for the witch, a lot of things we think we're doing one thing like, oh, instead of eating sugar, I'm going to have NutraSweet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or any of that, uh, I forget that word they use. It's, it's crazy. What's the word for the fake sugar? As, 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 aspartame. 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 Zero calories, I throw, I go the other way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rat poison. Literally started off as rat poison. What? And they found that it tastes like sugar. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? And that's, that's how it is. Coolant. Yeah, coolant. <laughs> coolant. Coolant. No. Coolant, yeah. Oh, coolant. <laughs> Like, it's, it's yeah. Hey Tyler. Hey Tyler. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Do you work for Verizon? <laughs> yeah, I might as well. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm terribly sorry. I uh had the time down wrong and I was just taking my time at the gym. I decided I'm gonna go get some lunch and then I looked at my message. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> You know, we were supposed to surprise you with Scott. So now we're just going to surprise Scott with you. Like, hey, it's time again. <laughs> I am surprised with Scott. And I was just thinking about you, actually, Scott. That's funny. What's up? How are you? What's going on, man? I know you're a busy man. Uh, got a big one coming up. Yeah, I do. that's what I wanted to say. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I'm it's excited. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys there. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, it's right around the corner, and I have a trip even before that that I'm going on. So I have this trip to plan for and the conference, but it's all going to work out, and I'm excited. I'm excited. It's just busy time, that's all. You're one man down today. What, are you talking about Aaron? <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> I'm talking about your bosom buddy. Yeah, you're, you're one man down. What's up? Yeah, he's in uh, he's in Egypt right now. Is it a trip with Carrie Cassidy? Yeah. Oh my God, I didn't even know that. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, he's with her right now. Him and his girlfriend. Uh, they they'll be down there. It was a two week trip total, so he'll be back. Uh, I think Easter Sunday he comes back. Cool beans, cool beans. So you. Do you mind sharing? Where is your trip? Is it someplace cool and exciting? Are you going to bring back something special? Um, it's cool and exciting. I don't know if I'm bringing back anything special, but it's I'm going to the uh, to Belize, um, the jungle. Um, I'm going with a team of people. We're um, exploring some ancient ruins on this on this private property down there. So um, we're not technically allowed to disclose we're exactly where it's at. So you're right. on. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So I was I was excited about your conference. What are who are some of the people that you got coming to the conference? I'll just put this all on you. Um, there's this lady, the first lady, Erica. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I'm not speaking. I'm not. <laughs> uh, hopefully Scott's going to be there. Um. No, we have uh, an, a great lineup this year. Uh, we have, man, I see if I can remember them all. Brad Olson, Abby Lynn, Tony Rodriguez, Geraldine Orozco, Samuel Chong. Uh, we, Sue Walker couldn't make it if you don't know her. She channels the Ponte ETs uh, who live in a base underneath the Sandia Mountains in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, but she can't make it due to medical uh, reasons for medical reasons. And so Margie K who is a remote viewer and a seer and an experiencer as well. Um, she's going to take her spot. If you guys missed that episode, uh, I highly recommend going back and checking out our episode with Margie K. She's incredible. 
she's got some next level information and uh, not many people are aware of her aware of her so i'm excited about that and then barry littleton if you guys know barry he's an amazing experiencer he's been around for some time he has an incredible story to tell then we have jessica jones Sherry Divban, Jock Doubleday, and Brooks Agnew. That, I, that's all of them. Oh, and then we're doing a panel with James Rink, Tony Rodriguez, and Daryl James. A SSP panel. Right. Is, is that going to be like a whole day or is that like a half a day? Or No, it's just going to be like a just a regular like two-hour panel. Um, just going to be people can they get up there and people can ask them questions and uh, just a, a typical panel that you would see at a conference like that. Okay, so... um. I already got my I got my uh, spot last year. Oh, as soon as you told me, whatever, I went and booked my room because you said those rooms were going. So we're gonna be out in the woods having a time and you yeah. Know. I mean, it, Scott can tell you it's not. I mean, you're it, it's in the woods. It's in like a wooded area, but it's a beautiful setting. It's not like you're lit off grid entirely. Um, you're not roughing it or anything like that. <laughs> right, you're not roughing it. It's, it's, it's definitely, a, it's a beautiful site, actually. There's, um, it's like an old lodge, um, an old stone lodge where there's cabins. Um, it's just beautiful. I mean, the architecture is beautiful. The land is beautiful. It doesn't feel, it's not that corporate hotel feel. It's very oh. homey, earthy. Um, you're connected with nature out there. And it's just a place that you want to just, uh, you want to spend four days there, even if there wasn't a conference. So my mom wants to come. Yeah, she's, she's bring like, her on, bring her. Like an old school psychic. She, you know, she believes in that sulfur and fire. Like ah, like, <laughs> and she's like, I want to go. I'm like, mom, really? So if my mom grabs you and starts to read your palm or something, man, don't get you know, just be patient with her. Like okay, mom, just uh, calm down. I got my my psychic defense will be up that <laughs> week. I got it. <laughs> I'll be like blocking that shit. I thought it was so cool that Jessica Jones, like Jessica Jones, okay, she's named after a Marvel character, but a Bigfoot huntress? Like, where'd you find her? Um, the internet. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed, I noticed, um, I honestly don't remember how the the relationship started, but I, she was doing some great work and I and I stumbled across her work. She's a field investigator. They don't, you know, she doesn't just talk about this stuff. They go out in the field yeah. and they do some incredible work. They document everything. They have a team of, prof of professionals. And on top of it, they also remote view um, the area. They remote view this, the area that they're investigating as well. So they're getting information. Uh, like, let's just say they go like uh, in one case, they literally discovered what they would consider a portal. And they sent two of their team members th to go investigate. It was showing up. It was just something weird. Uh, um, like a void. It was like a void where there was nothing there. And it was like right. a box, right? Right. Yeah, when yeah. Inside, they couldn't be seen from the outside. Yes. And, and they have the evidence of that on the thermal imagery. Their heat signatures disappear. Um, so anyway, they remote view they don't only document what they're experiencing. Now they go back and they'll remote view. Um, they have a team. They do blind study and sometimes they know their targets. But um, in this case, they determined that this was definitely some sort of government portal. Um, they A lot of times, some of this stuff that um, we think might be natural, it could be a natural portal that was weaponized and has been taken over by our government or militaries or whoever. Or it is a man-made portal that they're using for whatever purpose, right? We don't actually know. Uh, you can speculate, and she has tons of information on that. And I love her research on the blind studies she does because that, I think, is more accurate intel sometimes. Because if you know the target, then you have your own bias. There's that confirmation bias happening. So you can, like, if if you're if you're remote viewing the moon and you want to see you want to believe or you believe that there's a base on the back side of the moon you're going to see that base because it's already in your belief system complex right so if you don't have any awareness if you just have a blind target and you get information that's corroborated or triangulated let from two other remote viewers 
Um, that's, I love that type of, uh, information. I love that type. I love that method. I don't know if you guys had any questions about the conference. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think we're going to drive and I'm just looking forward to just being wide open and, and enjoying the experience and getting to meet people. Um, yeah, I, I will say, oh, I sorry. Say, I noticed you, you had a little, yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about this, but you have a little sabotage going on. Like you're, you're the, the, the little telegram, like it's being. Oh yeah. I, I really don't want to feed it much energy, but I mean, it's kind of comes with the territory whenever we, all of us do this type of work, yeah. you're going to get, you're going to get pushback from certain groups of people or certain people who, I don't know, they're threatened by what we're doing or uh, it doesn't really matter because we're, I know why I'm doing it and I know I'm in integrity and I know my intentions are pure, so it doesn't really uh, affect me what there's a lot of chatter out there. Um, I, people are trying to steer people away from the event, but well, I don't I, care because the right people are going to show up anyway, and it's going to be amazing. And it, yeah, I'm just going to touch on this briefly. I'm not going to say anything crazy. I know you read. So I said, let's talk shit. He's like, I'm not talking about nobody. I was like, it's OK. You know, I'm going to be gentle. But what, what you know, there's just so much accusations of that you guys are rich so i heard you guys were rich and you know you you getting thousands upon thousands upon thousands and because you got like a million subscribers right and you know people are just sending y'all money left and right i mean do you speak no. on that like right yes i will okay. i wish we i wish we were rich um both of aaron and i both have full-time jobs um we work um, mine's, mine's full time in the, in the sense I'm self-employed, but I still need to work every week, every day, if I can, um, and construction on the side, I, to pay my bills, um, the chump change that we're getting from the podcast, the podcast is free. We don't charge anything for the podcast. YouTube, they keep 30% or more of any, any of the revenue, even donations we get beat by the time Aaron and I split the money. Um, we still can't pay our bills. We have to work. You know, there's no, um, this conference, uh, we're barely going to break even. Um, hopefully we come out ahead, but we're, that's why the tickets are so low. We're just doing this. Um, we're making it as affordable as possible because people are getting raped everywhere they go financially right now. And yeah, I could have charged, there's no, I could have charged $600 a ticket if I wanted to. And, you know, tried to make bank, but I'm, we're not doing that. So um, we just, you know, figure out what it's going to cost. And and it costs a lot to not only, you know, work, you know, well, you're paying. Places like this, you got to put cash up front. I think a lot of people don't understand that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And forget the venue. You have, we have presenters, volunteers, um, audio people that we are paying for their travel, oh, their wow. stay, their food, their... Um, <clears throat> whatever else, you know, we are covering all expenses paid for the people that are helping make this conference happen. They are the attraction, right? So um, it's adds up. It adds up, especially with travel. So any, if people think we're making money, like that's exactly the opposite. Like I still am every day trying to figure out a way I can make it and pay my bills. So uh, that's just a misnomer that it's one of those hyper sensationalized claims that no one can prove otherwise that no one can prove. And, and so it's like, whenever I see people saying that they're using the same exact tactics as the mainstream media, the hyper sensationalized claims right. that there's really no foundation of truth. But whenever you say it with confidence and you keep repeating it, it, it manipulates people, it programs people. So, um, you know, we're not rich. <laughs> not even by a long shot. So, um, I wish we were, um, but, yeah, uh, Terry. did you want to, did you want to have a question, Terry? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just going to ask you, uh, how many conferences have you put on? Like what is, is, what, which one is this one? This is only the second one we've done. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the first one, um, I was sick to my stomach with that one. I thought I was going to lose like 10 grand. You know, I did it all wrong. And 
uh, I, I bundled the food package with the uh, ticket price and uh, it was super affordable for the guests. But I realized, oh, damn, I'm screwing myself big time. But the universe took care of us and we made it. So it was great. And we, I just said, I said, hey, we're, I, we had so much overwhelming feedback. I wasn't even going to do another one. Uh, I thought about it, but then I was like, no, that was too stressful. But then all the feedback, everyone was like, you have to, you have to. So and things started lining up to where it was just kind of like I was being nudged, like, yeah, it's a good idea. You should do it. So we're doing a second one. And it's um, I hope it's just as amazing as the first one, if not better. And and uh, in, in for people that want to come, we have the four day pass, but we've just made day passes available, too. So you don't have to come for the entire time. You could just pick what days you want to come buy a couple day passes or even one day pass if you're local. And if you can't make it, there's live stream passes. So it'll be live streamed anywhere in the world. And uh, that includes a six month replay. So if you don't even if you don't make it live, you can still watch the replay. And if you buy an in-person ticket, it includes the the conference replay as well. So, we, yeah. so, so for the live stream, because I'd be interested in going, but I live north of you and I don't know whether I'll be able to travel. So how would I be able to connect with the live stream? What, where will I find the information? So if for anyone, I'll just say this as a, in a general sense, for anyone who wants to purchase a live stream ticket, you just go to the website and the ticketing is there. You click buy live stream pass and it tells you, it gives you a little bit of instruction. You check out, but whenever you must, it's crucial that you check out with the email address that you want the live stream link sent to. So um, use that email address when you check out, you'll get a confirmation email. And then as the event approaches, I mean, you once the event starts, you know, if people want to catch it live, you'll be emailed that link. Everyone who bought a ticket is going to be emailed the link at the start of the event and then they can click the link and tune in. Now, simultaneous with that, uh, any tech issues, any questions anyone has for the live stream, if you're part of the Telegram group, you can get on the Telegram chat that's on the conference website and you can talk amongst uh, each other, amongst yourselves, and you can ask questions. Um, if there's any tech issues, hey, I can't hear, hey, something's wrong with this. That's where we're gonna be doing all of our uh, our troubleshooting, any, any uh, our live stream guy, the tech guy is going to be in that chat constantly, uh, making sure he addresses any problems or concerns. And that's also where we're going to be taking questions. If somebody wants to ask questions to the presenters, if there's time at the end of their presentation for a Q&A and they want to take questions, we are going to be hand selecting some questions from the Telegram group as well, if people have them, the people who can't be there in person. So we're going to try to include them as much as we can. Obviously, time limits, you know, kind of will crunch that down a little bit. But um, I hope that answers your question. You guys are really going above and beyond. I've never heard of a conference being in person, live stream and taking questions from the live stream. And then people attending, being able to watch it again at a later date because they have access. Wow. Wow. That, yeah, I, most, above and beyond. most events I've always thought um, like if you pay for the in-person event and you've already seen it, like no one's going to pay. Like if you want to watch the replay, I don't feel like the in-person attendee should have to pay to watch it again. Um, so that's just included. So once the conference is over, once we have like kind of a, a well-polished um presentation put together of the entire conference conference like a whole package then every ticket holder is going to be emailed that link so that they can watch the the individual presentations or the entire conference for me personally as a vendor i'm loving it because i was i was told at other con other conferences that i have to pay for my ticket plus a vendor spot and i thought let me call Tyler and ask him a question. <laughs> and he was like, no, it's just this one price. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm coming. Well, anyway. Yeah, we're not we're yeah. not charging the vendors uh, the ticket price, so just a small vendor fee for the table. And that, um, the, the I, I just feel like, yeah, we could easily make you guys all pay for a ticket. But at the same time, like you are part of the attraction. Like you, the vendors, they're making the conference what it is. Like, if without eliminate the vendor area, it's just one thing less that people get, you know, 
with their ticket. So um, I feel like it's just part of the experience. And if you guys are coming and helping our, make our event amazing, then you shouldn't Bye. have to pay for it. And so what's the point of having the conference in the first place? Because I think, I guess, <clears throat> I, de I guess depending on your focus, people will have a different focus. I think we need to live and we, we need to enjoy our time. We need to right. live and we do need to socialize, but what, what is the purpose to you even having this, this, this type of event? Um, some people think it's like, uh, has everything to do with disclosure. Um, it has nothing to do with disclosure, actually. Uh, it's amazing. But we basically host an online conference all year. That, that's what our podcast is. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're disclosing this information all year long. So you can't just get people together just because now that they're speaking in person, it's not like things are just going to change. Now, it does have a ripple effect when everyone gets together and all like minded and star family, soul family unites. That's what's powerful when everybody connects that's what they don't want that's why they don't want us to travel that's why there's so many limitations right now in our society they you know all these mandates and regulations uh and they make people scared to travel uh, because when you're traveling for one when you're going to one of these events um just that sacred union of everyone getting together it's such a powerful light that the, that's a threat to the dark and it creates this ripple effect that lasts for years and years but also people are doing grid work when they travel subconsciously you're yeah. doing grid work you're affecting the, the land you're healing the ley lines or whatever has been corrupted maybe you're uh, realigning that so i think that's one of the big reasons they don't want people to travel anywhere right now um and they make it difficult and obviously they're raising prices and it's just unaffordable blah 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 they know the the top controllers know that whenever you travel to certain key places on the planet, especially your soul in particular, you might have keys and codes that might activate something in that area that reawakens Mother Earth and it ultimately assists in the, in the ascension of the whole planet. So I think by everyone getting together at a conference, they're not just, you know, creating that giant nuclear explosion of light that's just rippled out throughout the entire planet. But we're also all doing grid work simultaneously. And it's a we live our lives through these screens. And that enough is enough. Like we need to see each other. We need to hug each other. Physical touch is a is so crucial right now. And to be able to go amongst travel somewhere and be amongst people who won't judge you for your stories and your experiences and and what you believe in and just accept you for who you are. And everyone that goes to these conferences. It's the, the consensus across the board. They say, I feel more at home here than I do with my own family uh, and their you know, blood family because your soul family knows who you are on a soul level. You know, and, we're, and we've all lived past lives together and we've all been in relationships together. We've been family members together, whatever the case is. Um, whenever you meet somebody and you recognize them on a soul level, you know them, but you don't know them more more than likely you've had an, uh, a past life experience with that person or an alternate alternate parallel experience in some type of a space program or something. Either way, your soul recognizes their soul. And it's beautiful when we all get to unite. Yeah, I think the biggest thing too, like this is why they want to promote these wars overseas online, like on the news to make people feel these other countries are unsafe and you know just trying to create like tension amongst different cultures so that we don't go to these places but nah damn it all we got to get out here we got to get out here like we own this earth someone told me they said well why should you go to Egypt to see pyramids you can see them in America and I'm and I was like, don't you know I own this whole planet? Like this whole thing is mine. I need to put my foot everywhere I can go. And why should it stop me? Because the pyramids are here. But I had way right. more in Egypt. Sorry. <laughs> and and you know what? Um I I proved your theory right. Like, so the media, the propaganda of what's going on around the planet isn't nearly as bad as what's actually going on around the planet. They make it so dark and cold and gruesome that you would never want to go travel there and visit that place. I went to Australia last summer. Everyone 
was like, what are you doing? You can't go right now. That's totalitarian government. They're freaking arresting people on the streets and this and that. And they're dragging them out of their homes. And like, you're crazy. I would never go there right now. And um, I went there and I didn't see any of that. Actually, it was more laid back than here. It was beautiful. Everyone, no, I didn't see anyone wearing a mask. It was complete, the complete opposite of what they were showing us on TV. Oh they, they're they fucking lying through their teeth, showing us fake footage. They don't, they're giving us this false image of what's happening on the planet right now. Yes, there are hardships. And yes, sometimes the things I mentioned are happening, but they're in small localized areas. And they're only reporting on that and acting as if the entire continent of Australia is is like that when Australia is massive and just like all these other countries and continents, like it's nothing that we're, we're getting reports and news reports from these small towns and these sit, local cities, but there are beautiful places out there on this planet that are just waiting to be explored. And the locals are welcoming us with arms wide open. There's nothing to be scared of. Uh, they'd be, the only thing to be scared of is <laughs> the fake fear that they're promoting, you know, and there's, that's nothing to be afraid of. It is, is, it's so magnificent because what, what did it, you know, like when they show all black people are like boys in the hood, you know, people get this impression, all white people are like the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, you know, all Africans are outside naked, you know, just <laughs> right. it's, it's a big old smoke screen. I was scared to go to Canada because I had a layover in Canada. I'm not going to lie. I was scared to death. I was like, Justin Trudeau is coming to get me. Like, <laughs> I was really scared. And then I got there and nobody cared if I had on a mask. Nobody cared. You know, nobody asked me about vaccine. And I think that it's true. They go and find the most obscure cases and then they run with that story and pump it up and pump it up. And someone even mentioned this about even with the transgender type thing, that they focus on showing these things to you to freak you out and get you depressed about the state of the world. Like there's things going on, but you know, I've, I've I don't see my library, you know, with drag queens. <laughs> you know? right. I've been to my library. There's no drag queens in my library, so I'm, uh, you know. Well, it's a it's like I said, it's agenda season. Um, especially, you know, any type of election that's coming up or any anything, everything that they're doing is has ultimately has a political reason behind it. Um, they're not really they don't care, care about anything else. It's about politics, power, money. And, and that's it. Ultimately, you can break it down and branch that off into a million different directions and start overanalyzing everything. But uh, at the end of the day, um, it's a political agenda. A global elite is running the planet and they're trying to steer and steer the population in a certain direction um, while half the population is waking up. The other half is like getting further under the mind control and falling for it and taking the bait. So it's really interesting to see what we have going on right now. Uh, but our chaos is the order of the day. Systematic chaos. That's yeah. exactly what they want. Yeah organized chaos, organized crime. That's what this is. It's organized crime. Um, People, I, I was just talking to someone yesterday and they were, uh, you know, somebody lied in court and then, but they, they lied under oath and they end up winning the lawsuit, whatever. But, and somebody's like, how can you lie under oath? How can you lie? But I'm like, you don't understand. Like, first of all, nothing's stopping someone from lying under oath. You can still lie and get away with it. Right. Um, it just, that doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just, it, you can do it. But then they're like, why would the legal system system allow something like that? I'm like, the legal system is the most corrupt of all of them. It, like the, the reason that we have the problem that we have today is because the, the legal system is in on it. We have corrupt politicians. We have corrupt judges. We have corrupt lawyers. Um, everyone, they're all in it for the money and they're doing what they're told to do. Now, there are good hearted people and well intentioned people that go into those um, career paths hoping to make a change, but they find out like this isn't even, it's not, you can't change something that was engineered to be that way. People think it's broken. Like it was, it started off, you know, with these great ethics and morals, and it somehow along the way just became broken. No, it always started off that way. It's always been broken. It was engineered that way. 
So there's no coming in and fixing it now. The only thing, in my opinion, that can happen is for everything to ultimately collapse or crumble to to some point. Like even like just I like to use this analogy in all of our own individual lives. Like we don't ultimately make a change until we hit rock bottom. Most of the time, somebody has to hit rock bottom somewhere in their life before they make the change. You have to get sick of your own bullshit before you make that change. The same thing has to happen with the political uh, arena, the entire governments and the militaries, the, you know, uh, whatever. It all has to somehow hit rock bottom before something new can come from that and um, an actual change can happen. And I think that's, that's what we're seeing right now. Everyone's coming unglued. Everything's being exposed. Everything's uh, surfacing. We're seeing the planet for what it actually is, not the illusion that we've been fed. Um, not the planet, but the system. The planet's yeah. beautiful. Remove the, the remove the nasty people, the parasites, and it's a beautiful planet. Uh, and we have to remember that too. Like it's something worth fighting for. Yeah, it's funny you said that. I, I had a oh, I'm so sorry, Scott. Go ahead. No, I was, I was just gonna say, yeah, everything's definitely coming to a head right now. And uh, off of what you were saying. I, I think I think it's it's more than average politics and corruption at the moment. It, we're, we're, it's, it's it's a crossroads for us. We either go in one way or the other. And the globalists, the deep state, the Illuminati, whatever have you, they want this one world government. In order in order for them to have it, they have to have America to crumble, fall. You know. So that's what's going on in this country like never before. They have their 16-year plan to destroy this country, and that time is pretty much up. <laughs> and it didn't happen because of Trump, you know. Now, I, make what you want of Trump. You know, I'm not. I'm not here to say anything. I mean, I, I, I still, at the end of the day, I have some support for the guy. But that vaccine thing, man, I, I, it's hard for me to get down with all that. You know, it's hard for me to get down. That's that, that's my one of my number one subjects. You know, it's it's hard. That's that's one of the, actually that's the reason why I like Trump in the first place because he had vaccine tweets talking about the vaccine before he became president and I was like oh man I like this guy you know what I mean right but now he's calling himself the father of vaccines but anyways <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> anyway I th I think I think there's a way of saving this country that, without it completely crumbling to the ground that's what I was hoping he was all about you know preserving some of this infrastructure while just cleaning out the, the bad motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, these people don't create anything. They're leeches. You know what I mean? They, they harvest our creativity. They harvest all of our ideas and everything like that. And, and, and they use it against us, actually. You know, so what we need to do is take it all back. You know what I mean? And we have to have, to have righteous leadership. You know, or, or not, not even a, a certain leader. We have to have, like, a council. They ever have a brand new way of doing leadership, you know? But yep. we can keep the same infrastructures that we have. We just got to do it a lot differently, you know? Yes. So I don't think we need to completely burn it to the ground because that costs a lot of lives if that happens, well, you know? I, and I, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean, like, burn it to the ground. I, I meant whenever it had to hit rock bottom, like, uh, the people running the show, like, the entire ethical like unethical system that they have set up that has to hit rock bottom not the infrastructure yeah we can reuse the infrastructure like we don't want it all to burn down and we're just you know wading through the rubble like we don't need that but we need these other people out of the way right and that and they're at their own demise right now and at the end of every civilization the machine consumes itself so they're just you know they're consuming themselves right now and it's all imploding and once that happens, um, then it's going to it's going to clear the way for us and the rest of the world to start making the necessary changes uh, to make this the beautiful planet that it once was. I have a couple of things to say, since we're, we're on that topic. Number one, some people say it's money. And for me personally, I don't think that money is the problem. Because if you don't have money to trade, you'll trade something else. What, pro what the problem is, is individuals in their morality and their, their apathetic behavior towards one another, 
uh, their insecurities, uh, their selfishness, and it's, it's their hearts. So while some people say, oh, it's the money system, and it's like, no, it's not the money system, because I, if I have money, I'm pretty generous. You know, I will give people whatever they need. So people who are good people, when they have money, they give it, and they spend it, and they share it. Money just makes you more of who you already are. But then here it is, people are bringing up uh, Nasara and they're putting their whole lives on hold for this. And they're talking about RVs and they're talking about uh, being, you know, but doing those non-disclosure agreements to be the first to get this kind of money. And, and to be, if people are going into offices and signing paperwork for this type of stuff. And I think it's pretty creepy because number one, if, if you really believed in Nassara, then you're going to get what you're going to get anyway, right? You're going to get what's yours, what's been taken from you. So why do you need to sign an NDA and go into an office? And I, I really think it's no. a way to collect your information and swindle you out of money. That's what I think. Right. I'm going you to move quick on anything like that. You nailed it. I love that. If we don't trade money, we're going to trade something else. I mean, barter is, is, you know, it's ingrained within us. That's how we operate, you know, since ancient times, um, we've always been bartering with each other. So the monetary system, yeah, it has been weaponized and it is very corrupt. Taxation is theft and they're, they're literally robbing money out of our pockets every day. Yeah. It's corrupt on that level. And that part of it needs to go. But again, why is that happening? Because the wrong people are in control of it. If you had the right hearted ethical people with real morals who care about the planet who are in integrity acting from the heart space and not doing anything with an ulterior motive but purely for the sake of having a level even playing field for everyone then you're going to start to notice a change you're going to start to see a completely different planet you could take the same exact system we have and just put the right people in charge and make it better but even some even there's still even flaws within that. So yeah, complete rewrite would be amazing, but it's not necessarily, um, it's like you said, wait, putting your life on hold, waiting for this reset. That's, that's not going to do anything. That's why I think some of these people are out there pushing that information because they would love for everyone to put their life on hold and just quit fighting and just wait for this external event to happen. You know, if we're all one, then, uh, we're disclosures coming from us, even if that external like disclosure can't come from the external because we are the external, if that makes any sense. So it has to come from us regardless. Yeah, I was I was really confused if if money is this issue, why why are people thinking, oh, I'm gonna go sign some paperwork and I'm gonna get more money with you. And I'm going to, you know, invest in XRP and XLM and Tesos and Bitcoin. And I guess I really have an issue with all this because if I'm on a plane and, and, you know, on the way somewhere and I stop in Canada, I don't I just don't know what the hell if the world's coming to an end. What is gold bars sitting at my house or, you know, xrp gonna do for me when i'm in a plane crash and the world's coming to an end and the money system crashing i I don't even understand it if the money was crashing what what how did the people think xrp is not going to be affected as well i don't think for some type of magical savior and it's just making people wide open to any any kind of nonsense becomes logic now beautifully said um I think there is something to cryptocurrency and transitioning away from, you know, are the fiat currency into like a gold backed silver backed currency. Like, yeah, you can look at it that way. It's an effective tool. It's playing its part. It's here. It was always going to be here. It was inevitable. Uh, You talk to a lot of people, cryptocurrency is used off planet. It was all tested. The internet was used off planet. Everything was been tested in other planets before it was even brought here in the first place. And a lot of the coins are actually named after planets and star systems. People don't even realize that. So, and, uh, and some people claim that like they're named after those star systems because that, that group is actually here where that's their currency. Right. Um, So the cryptocurrency, it's playing its part. It is effective, but it's not the savior. I think 
ultimately like none of it matters at the end of the day if you're if you know you're dying you don't have electricity i'm not sure what xrp or bitcoins are going to do for me if there's no electricity or computers or exactly it's a digital currency yeah yeah with an emp um you don't have and it's all unoperational anyway so i get that exactly like that's why um george green he was an old whistleblower on project camelot he said he traveled the world and he just, he traveled the world with gold bars. And he said, you can spend gold bars everywhere on the planet. doesn't matter what country, third world, doesn't matter where you are everywhere except gold bars. And they have since the beginning of time. And no matter what crashes or what happens, you still have value. This will be worth more than a piece of paper that can be burned in a fire or whatever. So he would always travel with these gold bars. Right. Um, and at the, at the end of the day, like you said, you're bartering something anyway. And gold has value just because, I mean, maybe we're programmed to believe that it has value. Who knows? I believe it's probably abundant on the planet and it's been being manipulated and it's it's not as rare yeah, as we're being told. Is a, is a false representation of scarcity for our right. when there's right. other more valuable metals on the earth than gold. Right. Platinum or even diamonds like there's more valuable things than those. Yeah, life. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's all. It, none of it has to be. Well, it's manufactured. Mind. What? The the value that we place on things is manufactured. It's social engineering. Right. We're told that these things are valuable, and so now we believe that they're valuable. So now we actually place value in them. Right. It's like. Um, I have this amazing toy collection that I've had since I was a kid. Um, I've, I've saved all of my toys. No. Um, they've, um, they've they're not even opened. Anyway, there's something my dad and I did and we had this whole thing anyway. And I could, I could have it valued at X amount of dollars, but it's only worth that. If somebody pays that, only it worth. doesn't, otherwise it's worthless. Otherwise it's ab- worth absolutely nothing. You're never going to get what you think something's worth. It, it only has value if you give it value. Um, so I agree a hundred percent with you there. Um, there's, it's the false scarcity of everything and, you know, anything that has to be mined under slave labor isn't something I want anyway. And that's what, you know, these blood diamonds and all these, um, even crystals at this point, you have to know where your crystals are coming from. There's blood crystals as well. Uh, the, the ones that are being mass produced and they're showing up in Target and Marshalls and, and, uh, TJ Maxx and all these places now, uh, look, you don't know where those crystals are coming from. They're coming from factories that are mining these crystals under slave labor. You know, when you buy a crystal, make sure you know. I always ask the dealer, where did you get this from? And the best answer I could hope for is I got it directly from the mine or the miner who mined it. And then you ask them about the mine and you'll know if they're doing it under ethical intentions or not. So uh, that's just one thing to think about. Now they do have like uh, conflict free diamonds you can buy. That's a big thing now. Like if you want a wedding ring or something and you don't want that blood diamond, they have ethically sourced diamonds and stuff like that. They call conflict free. And there's companies that make wedding rings and stuff of that nature, um, all from conflict free stones. But I know I'm kind of getting off topic here, but well, we're wide I, I, all the time. <laughs> I'm just going to just add a little bit about the diamonds. They they have created a false value to the diamonds, right? Um, here in northern in up in northern Canada, apparently the diamonds are so abundant they're everywhere. You know, like up in, in northern Canada, it's it's like you know they do have mines up. Uh, you know, like they have they are mining for diamonds there, and there's a specific diamond, a Canadian diamond that's really pure. So, you know, we think that diamonds are are just are this valuable commodity because they have created that um, mm-hmm. for whatever reasons. But it's they're more abundant than we think they are. I wonder has anyone tried to cut a Herkimer diamond and make it. Why, why can't- a, Herkimer di- a Herkimer diamond is not really a diamond. It's a type of a quartz. Right. But you're, you're saying you wonder if somebody tried to pass one off as a real diamond? Well, if you could, I mean, you, you want the ring or whatever kind of ring. So what she, I think she just answered my question is why, why doesn't, why don't they put the value on a Herkimer diamond? Like, why is that a diamond, but not valuable? I mean, how, 
value for any of the crystals that we're right i mean it's all part of the programming like they'll push whatever they want to be valuable um because they make money off it on some level in yeah, some way exactly. you know they it, it's something you could have the most valuable crystal in the world but if it's not recognized as valuable by some expert out there by some government or something uh you're not gonna convince somebody that it's the most valuable crystal in the world you're just not um, they need proof. People want evidence. They want stuff to be verified by the freaking industry or whatever, you know. So um, I think that's just the issue there. Yeah, and, and just going they back. Need, uh, they need a story to tell them, you know what I mean? Because you, you can give them evidence, give them evidence about anything, you know what I mean? Unless an authoritarian person tells them, you know, like 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 I could get to give you evidence upon evidence that vaccines are bad, you know? Because they're bad. So unless a guy at a lab coat or a doctor's coat comes and says they're bad, nobody's going to believe it. Right. Yeah, exactly. It ha if it comes from an, an authoritarian figure, uh, then we believe it. And that's why we're taught in school to never question an authority. Mm -hmm. Oh, listen to the policeman. Listen to the principal. Listen to your teacher. Don't question them. Do what they say. That's that's pushed upon you your entire life. So when you get break free from the schooling system, when you finally get out of that, you're not going to question anybody who's above that. And that's the government. And you're not going to question anything they do. And you're going to believe everything they say. That's what they want anyway. What were you going to say, uh, Terry? No, I was just going to go back to the diamonds where they have a process now that when people die, you can be made into a diamond. What you're saying now, you're yeah, saying it's 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 a process that that they have that they will take the human body and they will heat it up to a certain amount and they'll create a diamond out of it. Well, the funeral industry, I think, the whole thing is a scam. I don't understand paying ten and twenty thousand dollars for a box that goes into a ground, but of course, the best grave robber is going to be the person in charge of the funeral, right? But I honestly believe that they bury those boxes and dig them right back up and sell those shits again. I believe that. And I think that they've been making diamonds out of dead bodies for quite some time and <laughs> and selling them just like they've been selling your family members' body parts. So get your family cremated. And <laughs> that's what I believe. So. Right. The entire funeral system, That's a, that's another issue in itself the insane amount of money it takes for somebody to die <laughs> like get out of here uh and then the family if that person doesn't have some sort of life insurance policy or they didn't have a savings or they don't have money the family has to pay for that and it's not cheap it is not cheap i know my mother passed away when i was 24 years old and she didn't have money she didn't have a life insurance policy and it wasn't cheap and guess who had to pay for all that to have a respectable funeral and awake in the you know the whole nine yards the family it has to there's money out of our pockets and no one not everyone is prepared to spend that type of money when their loved one dies and obviously the whole life insurance the insurance thing is another scam in itself and that's sold to you with pure fear i've had the insurance salesman they give you a scenario like this extremely impossible scenario but if this happens you'll be covered and like so you're going to tell me like there's a slight chance that I could crash and burn and roll down a hill or whatever. And I'm protected because I have this policy. Like, no, I'm not. They, you're, they're selling you this stuff based on fear. They put all these scenarios in your head and like, Oh, well, I better get that. You know uh, it's, it's horrible. I forgot what the, what we even started off talking about now. Yeah, uh, but because you went there, I can tell you because I was a life insurance agent, right? And so people said, how can they afford if you die to give you a million dollars when you didn't put a million dollars into it? And I don't know if you ever heard about the fact that insurance companies can't fail. Banks can fail, but insurance companies can't. That mm -hmm. every bank is backed by insurance companies. And then there's an insurance company that insures the insurance company. And so if you look in the white pages of an insurance company, you see that they invest in land and they invest in bonds, a certain kinds of bonds, all kinds mm -hmm. of bonds. And so when you think about the banksters, 
like say APG and Nini who started Bank of Italy. He moved over to Bank of America. And then he also started Transamerica who I used to work with, who has a red bottom shoe club or red. Yeah, they actually do have the red shoe club. So mm -hmm. it's like towards 2020, I start to think, well, what are these bonds? And I really think they're the straw man bonds. And so when you die and they buy your, I think they buy your bonds and that's how they can afford to pay your policy off. Oh, uh, okay. It's all fucked. <laughs> it's so deep. Well, and like- It made it click for me. And somebody said, well, if black, you know, during the riots, if black people really wanted us to, um, to to stop all this violence against them and you know from police that they would buy insurance policies and then the insurance companies would lobby saying hey don't kill these people because they were losing money but and then it clicked for me like where is the money actually coming from and I believe it's these bonds and you can look in their pages and see right they buy and bonds. Then, you know any one of us can start a bank and with no money that's how banks banks don't have money ever to begin with in the first wow. place like I can, all they do is if I want to start a bank, I take out a loan for X amount of money. And then I start my bank with the money from that loan. I pay off that loan by charging interest on all of the money that people are depositing into my bank. And the loan gets paid off with the interest. And eventually the loan's paid off. And then the interest is just my profit. That's it. That's as simple as it is. And you don't have to have a penny to start a bank. And these banks are all in collusion with each other and they're, they're out, you know, they're quote um, trying to compete with each other when their competition is actually themselves, but it drives people. It just still gets people to invest their money over here. And then over here, it's still investing their money. And that's what they want you to do because that's how they make their money. Well, I'm the fact that they're, uh, they're about to lend out 10 times the amount that they actually. Yeah. They only keep one tenth. Right. What I'm about to say is there's five of us here right now and we can start Starseed Bank of America. And then once we get rolling. <laughs> right. They say it's can't be beginning that. You know what I mean? Right. Like the, whole, like the, the, whole, the whole thing about the, the Federal Reserve, right? People are always talking about the deficit. Well, it was created off the deficit. If, if you create a dollar, right, and there's only one dollar in existence, but you already owe money on that one dollar, you know what I mean? Then there's already money that doesn't exist that you owe, which is a right. deficit. You know what I mean, so after you put each dollar, this creates the deficit for a board. It was it was built in to have a deficit. It's just a, a fucking ruse that they tell you to take your money. It, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the banks don't have your money if you go to try and withdraw all your money. Or if everyone tried to do it at once, they can't do it. They they literally can't. They, they can't shut do the it. door. And you've seen it in like old Westerns where they shut the door like, we don't have enough money in the bank. <laughs> Even right. right now, they didn't have enough water, right? They are right. like, oh, the water. <laughs> well, the entire, the, our entire belief system this world of limitation that we've ultimately created for ourselves from for some higher purpose to come have this experience. Um, it, it's a belief system that exists that there's not enough of anything. We can't, we don't, there's never enough money. There's never enough water. There's never all the things that we actually need. We constantly have to be doing something over and over and over to obtain that because we've created the belief of limitation instead of abundance we don't understand the concept of true abundance that none of this stuff is actually limited, but because the collective consciousness creates a consensus reality to where there isn't enough of these things and there is a scarcity, it becomes an actual fact. A fact is nothing more than a belief that enough people agree upon. It becomes a fact. So that's how a consensus reality is created. And no, no matter what you want to, uh, you can use any example that you want. If enough people believe in something, it becomes a reality. So really the whole thing that there's not enough of all of these things that we need to possess to survive, um, that's a limitation based on our own belief system. And I know this is getting more esoteric, but if we could somehow change that belief, um, that's when abundance starts showing up in your life. Um, when if, if you constantly think you're always lacking something, then you're always going to be lacking something. But you have to see yourself and envision yourself with enough of that. And now 
that's so much easier for me to sit here and say, because just like everyone else, I have to go bust my ass and work my ass off just to pay my bills and make it all happen because I don't have enough money. I don't have, you know, I have to pay my water bill so I can have enough water. Like that's, it's, we're stuck in the system, but we have to start changing that belief so we can finally break out. And when we do break out, we have a better understanding on how things are supposed to operate. Well, they have that saying, if money was no obstacle, and I think they needed, oh no, no object. And I think they need to change it to money. If, what if money was no obstacle? Because as soon as you ask somebody, can they go somewhere? Can they do something? If you ask them a question, the first thing they say, I don't have enough money. Instead mm -hmm. of saying, how do I get the money? They say, I don't have enough money. It's like an immediate response. And so they create the obstacle. That if I say, you know what, I'm going to move to Italy next year versus I can't because I don't have enough money. If I say I'm going to do it, all of a sudden the ways to make it happen will come and I will do it. If I don't place the first thing in front of me, the first roadblock as money. The, the avenues will present themselves if you allow them to. Yeah. It, everything shows up in your life the way you see it. If you're with a partner that you can't stand anymore, this he's so ignorant, I can't stand him, he's a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? He's going to show up as that person, that same person every day because that's how you see him. You're not allowing space for him to change and show up as somebody different. Now, that's the same with everything in life. We have to allow space for things to show up differently in our life. And we have to start looking at things through a different lens. And it can become a beautiful world or it can become the darkest, coldest, gruesome place you've ever imagined, like the news wants you to believe. And then there, there comes the word of sex is right based on that. Because all men are this and all women are that and black women aren't this and white men are like, so all we're doing is perpetuating our own, you know, negativity and, and making it grow. Our own demise. Right. So I... I Real quick, I want to know what Jonathan has to say. I haven't, I've never even met him before, and he's been sitting down there patiently yeah. being quiet. Oh, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, we briefly came across, uh, I think it was a while ago uh, um, when we were doing a meditation, I think before with Terry and Erica. It's like I came in at the very end of the, of the, the presentation guys were doing. But uh, yeah, it's nice to actually get on here and listen with you guys. And, you know, from all the avenues that you guys and we've been going and talking about, it's just there's so many streams that I got downloads of is calling it an illusion that there's so much energy that is being drawn from all these different uh, venues. And, you know, I I'm just I was just out uh, in out Winnipeg with Terry and I was going to a, a funeral of my uh my my ex father in law and they my uh she my ex mother in law was talking about you know for for the um to put the obituary in the news or in the newspaper it was like twenty four hundred dollars for one day what yeah there you go and so. And so it was like for for the one like for I think it was um what's the newspaper out there Terry, um it was the main newspaper that it was going to cost the, the free press the free yeah press. the free yeah. press is going to cost that much for literally one day the and free the, press <laughs> yeah the free press my ass right like seriously yeah. yeah um so it's it was very interesting and just to go through and they got them uh, you know cremated and everything like that and. Uh, just showing how, you know, she was open to more of the spiritual realm, but I mean, she's still that Catholic um, belief system and everything that the boxes and, you know, you go and put the pay for, you pay ridiculous money to put people in a closet of a box above ground. That's like, oh, they can just, they, they don't even wait for you to, you don't see them actually put them in there. So it's like they they oh when we leave, they'll put the they'll put the ashes and close the door and lock the doors. Like, okay, are they really doing that? They're taking out those those ashes and like taking it and going and creating some dimes. Right. You know. Interesting. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's creating all behind closed doors. Yeah. What's that? We're creating cadavers for medical school. Yeah. 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 We're um, selling body parts. People were selling arms and legs. They were selling the body parts. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. I mean, uh, go ahead. Whoever was going to say something. I was going to say, and that kind of goes back, you know, it's just holding, holding the souls and holding that, our, our, not allowing them to actually depart, you know, we were in this, in, say, if they didn't, and actually left them in there, you know, that essence of our being is still within that, in those ashes. So it's not going back to the earth, it's not being recycled, it's not becoming one with that, with earth, you know, so there's an, a tether or an anchor. That Ooh, is, that's, that's, it, so it, it it aids in the soul trap, even yeah. though it's a it's still a fragment of your soul. Like the entire soul's not there, but it's tethered. That's really interesting, and that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So it's an illusion. So then, that false that it's that religious belief that they believe in that in Jesus and got that projection of you know the misdirecting of the illusion. So there's always a draw of energy from these soul avenues mm -hmm. yes it's it goes back to the loose farming i mean it's all loose farming energy they're siphoning our energy everything's set up that way or the entire infrastructure the system uh, even the buildings everything's meant to draw that life force suck that life force from us whether it's good or negative energy um they're still siphoning it right. and um yeah. there, there's a lot of evidence of that and that's part of the reason they want us in the fear and the turmoil and and you know uh just any negative emotion that you can imagine they want us there because it creates that negative energy that they literally feed off of mm -hmm. and um yeah, especially the diet too the, the, what's that the diet how they got us away from the hunters mm. and the gatherers right you know, they got us away from the meat you know so meat is bad, but all the fat, you know, the fatty acids, you know, we need that for our brain to function. Right. And that's the whole, like, obviously, I mean, that's, we can get into that subject too, but yeah. you have the, the whole, I get it in a sense, people, a lot of like, let's say advanced races and stuff, they, they no longer eat meat anymore. They, they right. have different means of new uh, supplying themselves and absorbing nutrients into them, into their body. Um, and you know, there's this whole notion that if you, if you stop eating meat, you raise your frequency and then now you can connect with these beings. And I tried to stop eating meat for a year. I did stop eating and I did feel good. And I was having some connections and I also ultimately became malnourished because I, I have a tree nut allergy and I couldn't sufficiently provide my body with what it was lacking from the meat. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I started learning about like the native Americans and ancient cultures, how they, um, understood, the. Uh, so there's a deal between the, that the animals have with us. <laughs> they yeah. understood their sacrifice before they came here on a soul level. The animals did. They know they're coming here to be a food source for us. In exchange, we, when we kill them upon death, we transition their soul. We help their soul transition. We do it with respect. We utilize every part of the body um, for something good whatever whatever whether it be you know clothing shelter weapons whatever you need um you utilize everything none none of it goes to waste and any part that you can't use it's given back to the earth and there's this beautiful exchange um that still can happen and does happen there's actually a, a farm i just learned about like two weeks ago locally that actually does that mm -hmm. that before they kill their livestock they, they do this whole ceremony and it's this beautiful thing. I didn't know anyone was out there doing this. And um, they're they're honoring the deal, right? They're honoring the deal. So now you can eat that meat and you don't have to worry about having the negative effects of the trauma and the torture that's happening in these factory farms. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the stuff that we're buying from the grocery store that's injected with God knows what to make it the color that it is, to make it the size that it is, um, just to make it more appealing to sell. Uh, if you look at a real piece of raw wild game compared to a store-bought meat, they're not even the same color. Mm -hmm. That's that's not right. It's the same animal. Why doesn't it look the same? Uh, this this one over here is you know it's it has a label on it and it's there purely for marketing purposes. It's to fancy and dazzle everyone, and they program you to believe that 
if you see a piece of meat that's a different color or if it comes from a farm that's not trusted that's not trusted by the um whatever to science what you, you don't want to eat that food because now it's you i don't trust that you know everyone researches everything that's healthy for them but they don't research the shit that's killing them mm -hmm. yeah and and i've been i've been doing sun gazing for about two or three years about three years now and i was going to i was vegetarian and i was trying to go vegan and yeah i, I felt clear and and everything but i in ultimately what my download has always been is just you're in the physical body so there needs to be a balance with mm -hmm. with the the raw with the meat with you know the bison or or beef there's a balance that and it's not always that we're going to need it like every single night or every single other night so it's just truly really finding that that resonance for your body because yes. everybody is different so uh and it just to really listen to it and try to find the muscle testing or or just your body tells you yes every single time your body tells you exactly what you need to listen to your body and there, there's times that um stuff that i even know is good for me sometimes my body i'm just a steer away from it. i'm like i oh, know i i'm I actually need something else right now i need this and whatever just honor that listen to it mm -hmm. um it's an, it's a never-ending subject but it's mm -hmm. definitely worth uh, considering, you know, listen to your body, your body's an antenna. It's constantly telling you what it needs. And if you really get yourself in tune with it, I'm not perfect by any means, by the way, <laughs> I, this is something I struggle with every day. I don't always listen to my body and I do things I know I'm not supposed to do and eat things. I know I'll, I'll go and buy something that I know is poison because sometimes I can't even fight the own craving, my own craving. Or sometimes I just, oh, I sometimes I just don't there. care. Sometimes <laughs> I just don't care. I'm like, you know what? Uh, do it while you're human, <laughs> you know? It's uh, an experience. Right. It, but exactly. you're mindful. It's about being mindful and yeah. and making that choice. And, right. and when you're mindfully of working on that, it's like going through the healing journey. As soon as you become mm. mindful, bring awareness to it. Yeah, you may be consuming that, but you're conscious about it. So you're able to ground it and process it, right? Yeah. Amen. Like you were saying, like like you were saying earlier, it's like when you don't know of something that happens, and you go through it, you're getting, you know, you're getting affected. But if you're mindfully about it, you're you're putting, you know, a little signpost there, and you're like, okay, I can process this stuff. I think the both of you are really pointing out something uh, that Tyler, you, you said you didn't eat the meat, and you felt this higher connection, right? So, but the fact that we're here living a human existence and here to anchor in joy and to actually have pleasure, it's a stage that we're in a stage of development, right? And what I feel like a lot of people are doing is trying to skip the stages. Like they really want to skip this life. They want to skip all pain. They want to skip straight on up. You know, we're, we're trying to hack our bodies by not eating meat. We're trying to hack our bodies by you know, I'm, I'm, and then even relationships, I'm only going to go out with the one I'm going to wait. To, so you're not going to do dating. You're not going to have love. You're not going to do anything. You're just going to wait for the one and it's going to be perfect. And it's like, hey, you have no experience with love. So you can right. try to with the one and try to skip and be like, I'm just going to find. But, but we're, you know, and so then some people are using plant medicine and they want to have these ultimate experiences. And this is what me and Terry talked about last night is, is really everybody's trying to life hack and skip this quality of life. Skip, skip the journey. The thing, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, experience. I need some Doritos every now and then, and I'm going to drink a beer. Okay. And right. stop <laughs> smoking a natural cigarette and. And we're going to be happy and, you know, we might have a little piece of fat right here. I mean, I don't know what people are trying to do. I, well, I had two glasses of wine on the plane last night. And it, was, <laughs> it was free. I was like, what? This is free. You, like, you, you nailed it. I think, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. Life hacks, Skip. Life hacks, yes. So people, we've already been, we've done, lived the 5D lives before we came here. We came here for the human experience. And I always say I can imagine all of us one day uh, on another planet somewhere, you know, ascended a higher density. And we're going to be, we're going to be talking to each other like 
damn, remember on Earth when we got to eat cheeseburgers and drink beer? Like, <laughs> like I miss that shit, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then be like, you know what? It's still there. That three third dimension is still there. Let's go back and do it again. And we can like, hey. learn some more. Um, no, but I feel like it's not about like, yeah, the life hacks. Exactly. Um, everyone's trying to find a shortcut or an easy way out. Same. They, they've been doing it and take it down to simplest terms as a basic diet. Like everyone wants that magical diet. That's going to make them skinny overnight. Right. And they try everything ex ex except work out and our exercise so uh it's exactly it everyone's trying to do everything except for the shadow work and and live the human experience that they came here for and whenever you're constantly trying to escape like you're going to be miserable all the time and, or you can accept what is and accept that you're here and then you're in survival mode with everyone else we're just trying to make it. We don't know what to expect tomorrow or the next day or the next day. We have no idea what's going to happen. So you just got to live in the present, be as present as possible. Stop worrying about the future. That's the definition of anxiety is worrying about the future. You're going to be completely anxious all the time if you don't just stop and relax and become present and stop worrying about you know, all these external things that ultimately don't matter. Like sometimes, yeah, we have legitimate things we need to worry about and be concerned about. I'm not saying that, but ultimately, like we can find a way to live our lives and not have to look for life hacks. Like we can find a way to just live like that flow. Mm -hmm. Right. Be. Yeah, we have to be. So one, one, I was just going to say the the wonderful thing about humanity is that we are resilient. And that is probably one of the main reasons why they want to control us is because we are resilient and we can adapt to, you know, we can find a way of, of flowing around the situation because even what we've gone through in the last three years, it shows people's resilience. And, yes. you know, even though they've tried to suppress us, humanity has found a way around it. And that's because we are we have that ability to be resilient and to mm -hmm. find ways around obstacles. And that's that creative nature that we are just have been endowed with by the creator. Exactly. And this is something I say all the time. I can imagine the negative controllers looking at us like, damn, like how, how, <laughs> how is Terry living her life so happily right now? Like we've poisoned the water, we've poisoned the air, we've poisoned the food, you know, we've made, we've raised the prices. We made it impossible to live. We're taxing the hell out of her and she's still happy. What's, what's up with these humans? Like, like we can't even go exist on the surface because we'll die in the atmosphere that we created because we're so sensitive to it. And these humans are constantly adapting, surviving, not only surviving, they're thriving in some cases. Uh, we are resilient. We're amazing. And I think that's why our DNA, our genetics are highly sought after by whatever other races out there that are here interested in us. I feel like you're spot on with that. It's like nah, nanny boo boo. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and because you said that, because I see people, I'm gonna hit this spot, and I think Terry, you wanted to hit this spot too. It's like so people are claiming like they have a royal bloodline and and they're royal this, and and I'm like, what the hell are y'all talking about? I mean. I don't know what people are so excited about with their bloodline. And I'm like, we're mixed with cats and dogs and dragons and you're mixed with pig. But I don't hear anybody saying I share DNA with pigs and rice and daffodils. But they're really excited about trying to claim to be Anunnaki. And I say, you know, I really don't understand why people want to be Anunnaki because I, I, I'm allergic to slavery, doing it to other people and having it done to me. So I, I'm really not ex sure what the excitement is about wanting to be Anunnaki. It's it's your own, it's programming. People, It's still that uh, ego. Somebody's in their ego because it makes them feel important if they're connected to what we would consider a royal bloodline. And what does royal mean? What, what does that mean to all of us? It means somebody above us, somebody elite, somebody powerful. So if you can tell people that you have, you're connected to this royal bloodline, Obviously, you're telling people that you want them to think that you're also elite on some level. And you I think it's all me. It's, 
Right. It's all ego. And it's just, you know, a lot of this stuff comes from an unhealed place. And obviously being in a place in a society where nobody knows who they are. So everyone's looking for meaning or purpose. And it's just somebody attaching themselves to a narrative to make themselves feel like they have purpose because we've all been stripped of what it means to actually be human. We don't know what that feels like. So that's everyone's just putting their power somewhere. Everyone is clinging on to different narratives and stories and people like to tell themselves stories. And sometimes that story might not even be true and they're lying to themselves about who they are, but it's their identity. And that's what people need. Everybody wants an identity. Everybody wants to be a part of something um, because we're confused right now. We don't know what to believe in and we don't know who we are. So when you can find something that you attach to, like, well, I'm part of this royal bloodline, that's amazing for that person because now for the first time ever, they have a sense of purpose. I, I, I'm actually connected. I'm important. You know, we're all important, but we've been manipulated away from our intuition. We've been manipulated and tricked into thinking that we're not important, but everyone is just as equally as important. And if we understood that, that person wouldn't be clinging to that narrative that they belong to this royal bloodline. I, I had my my little spill on that was I, I we got molested by the babysitter, y'all. We were we were here. We we're supposed to be doing our thing. They're supposed to be doing their thing. We got molested by the babysitter, and people are excited. I'm like, what are we so excited about? You know, you know, and it is. It's that trying to insert superiority. And you know, I won't say too much more because you, <laughs> you, where I'm going with this one, but I, I just think it's full of shit. And I, the, the, the idea that you know that's not our original root race. That's not where the one of the original root races either, is it? What the Anunnaki? Right. I, I don't know. I really okay. don't. I it's wouldn't. I, I, that's not one of the original root races. Those were some after people came. And like I said, the yeah. babysitter, they were supposed to be doing some job to get some gold. And I would agree with that. Yeah. And I, and I want to go back to something you said earlier, how whenever I, I told you when I quit eating meat, I, I felt like I was um, resonating at a higher frequency and I was having these experiences. Now, that could have been all based on my belief system surrounding giving up meat. I could, it, it's like a placebo effect, right? Maybe I was having those experiences because I believed that since I stopped eating meat, now that I can, now I can have those experiences. Maybe I could have them all along, and I didn't need to stop eating meat to have those experiences, right? right. So, and ultimately, the, I will say the one thing I observed in my physical vessel was uh, when I cut out some of these meats that I was eating, and that some, and along with cutting out meat, you cut out a lot of other stuff that goes along with it. Um, I started noticing that after I ate, I had energy for like, I was like, Oh wow, it's possible to eat and not want to take a nap. Like I was blown away. Uh, and then I started understanding. So it, I needed to go through that experience to even understand how my body was responding to the foods I was intaking. So I needed to have that experience r regardless of the reason or whether or not it was causing me uh, to connect with these beings and raise my vibration, I think that was more mental based on my belief system surrounding that. And I, so, um, uh, for anyone out there, I'm not telling, I'm not saying it. Yeah. Oh yeah. As soon as you stop eating meat, you're going to be connected by with a plea. A Pleiadian is going to, uh, connect with you immediately. You know, uh, you might just become delusional. Cause I've seen some people that, I mean, the level of anger, the level of self-importance, the level of, uh, just strangeness that I've seen. I've seen people who don't eat meat and they're good. But I've seen people who don't eat meat and they're constantly judgmental. They're constantly repeating to other people, thank God I don't eat meat. Um, or they're always looking at someone else like, oh my gosh, she drank a soda. That's so unspiritual. And it's like it, it, this, this huge level of judgmental guilt you know, yeah. energy, you know. But hey, right, they that um but marijuana because we talked about marijuana last night too because if you need to smoke weed to be in a state of zen then you haven't mastered zen so right. just the same way you're saying if i need to eat if i need to not eat meat to reach zen where's the transmutation where's the power that you have because that means you're giving your power to the physical right well, and also it also the meat thing. Uh, I was just saying, it also shows you 
how strong your beliefs are. Look what I was able to accomplish just because I believed that, that was happening. But go ahead, Scott. No, a lot with the meat thing. Like I, I, I did the same thing. I was vegan for a while. I dropped all the way to 170 something pounds, and I, I felt frail and weak, and I was always cold. Oh goodness! And I, I, I felt like I was withering away. It was terrible, actually. But uh, <clears throat> I, I would during that time I would always lecture people on eating meat as well. You know what I mean? And I think that was just a reassuring trying to talk myself into it. You know what I mean? Because. It honestly never felt right to me, you know what I mean? And, and and I was always trying to talk myself into it, so thereby going to others and spilling that shit onto them, you know what right. I mean? It's like so your it was, affirmations. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So uh, that's what mostly that's about, because it's a, it's a hard thing to rewire your brain not to eat meat if you've eaten meat your whole life, you know what I mean? So Right. Now, there's some, it's all a learning experience and everything's a stepping stone if we allow it to be. And it's taking us to a higher place, the next level, the next chapter, whatever. And there are things to learn about yourself when you stop eating meat and you learn about foods and diets. Like, like I learned, you know, the protein, that's one of the biggest scams on the market because I finally started diving in and doing that research. We don't need, no one's dying of protein deficiencies. Um, 100% right. Right. All like the guy who created the protein shake went on to Joe Rogan's podcast and debunked his own product. He's like, I'm not like, he was like, he goes, it's, I only created this for the bodybuilders who are performing in these shows who are spending 12 to 14 hours a day in the gym. Like they needed something and I created this shake for them and somehow it took off and they marketed it. And now it's this whole scam that we, because, because they thought, Oh, this protein shake, this guy looks like this. It must be because he's drinking these protein shakes and boom. Now everyone connects muscles to protein, right? Um, we don't, protein is essential. Yeah. But guess what? When you're eating an animal, you're actually getting recycled protein because guess where they're getting their protein from the plants. There is wow. protein in a number of plants out there that, and you're getting it from purely straight from the source by when you eat certain plants that are, you know, efficient or in it. So you're doing the processes for us because you just said it, that there, it's a third party, but their gut is made to ferment. And that's why they can eat that. And our stomach has acid. And that's why there we're going to eat muscle because of the acid versus. And I'll give that credit to Sal March because we, we discussed uh, veganism and, and eating meat with Sal March and he educated us on the stomach of animals mm -hmm. versus the stomach of humans. Interesting. Yes. So that was something I hadn't even considered yet. So there you go. You're constantly learning, but regardless, it, going on that journey, when you change up your diet in any way, shape or form, and you start doing research in certain areas, it's a good thing, no matter what, like you're learning about yourself and who you are and what you need, what you don't need. And you learn a lot about our food supply chain and everything that like what's shit and what isn't. And uh, it, I, th I think it's all great to constantly explore. I mean, we, we never really know who we are, what we need, and it's constantly changing as we change. So every day you just have to keep asking yourself those questions and keep researching. I think star seeds are to the point where it's like the matrix how uh, they said the, the machine said that when we made the world perfect, they rejected it. So they needed stress and disaster. And so yeah. what I noticed that star seeds do are they're like, oh, if you eat meat, you can't ascend. If you smoke, you can't ascend. If you drink, you can't. Like we're always looking for this way to be like, aha, some type of gotcha to stop each other to the point where someone was told that if they painted their fingernails, that it was going to have black goo in it and they were going to, it was going to stop their ascension. And I was like, honestly, you believe that the creator of the universe is so powerful that fingernail polish will stop him from doing what he has to do. Right. So we can't transmute, you know, like it's your food, even your food, you might say, Oh, it was processed this way, but you have the power to call in and transmute this food, the water, you know, I had another friend say, you know, if you can't smoke and you can't drink and be psychic. And it's like, you know, I had another friend, she said, I wish I could drink enough to make this shit stop. You know, like I can't drink enough to make this stop. Right. So, you know, all these made up rules. Where is this coming from? Uh, it's coming from, like I said, a lost civilization. When I say lost, people are lost. They don't know who they are. And everyone's trying to figure this out. There was no foundation of truth to begin with. Wow. So. 
we are literally trying to figure this out as we go. And everyone thinks when they hear something that resonates with them, <laughs> sometimes they cling on to it and that becomes their ultimate truth, not considering that I, this is only supposed to be a stepping stone for me so I can learn this about myself and so I can change this about myself and then move on. But people cling, that's what religions do. They put a lid on the human potential. Eventually, like you're not going to try and expand outside of that because you're doing everything perfect within that religion, right? So, and, and I just feel like everything is, is so extremely limiting and we don't understand ourselves and people are always trying to play gotcha like you said mm -hmm. like that's my i love that everyone's trying to play gotcha like oh you're doing that uh you're controlled opposition you're a demon you're whatever now some people are and some people that all oh, that stuff exists wow. oh everybody's a compromise and everybody's a demon right. don't let two people not like each other oh my god you're right. the now now the, there is entities that prey on us and they take advantage of people who aren't um, in alignment and who aren't feeding their bodies like some of these foods and poisons are put in place so these entities can remain attached to us and we that is a real phenomenon that we see happening right now among a lot of people especially in the truth of community they're they're not gonna they're not i mean they're already screwing with the zombies right but well, the the star seeds who are awakening up that actually have a chance to make a difference they're the ones who are being targeted the most. So if you're not if you're not aware of everything that can potentially happen to you, these entities can attach themselves to you. Parasites are taking over the human body from the inside out. And parasite cleanse is one of the most important things you can do, I think, because a lot if you're a channeler or if you are whatever, um, parasitic thought forms are, are real measurable things. Parasites in your body can manipulate your thoughts and make you think things that aren't true. So if you're, if you're aren't like, if you aren't doing those practices, if you've never done a parasite cleanse and then you tell me that you're a channeler, um, I'm not judging anybody, but I'm just saying like, <laughs> th there has to be some sort of protocol here. Every, you know, we need to understand the, ex the length that these people or entities will go Ooh. to in the midst of war right now. We discussed this last week with Scott because we were talking about how bacteria and fungus crave sugar and they're literally in, you think you're hungry, but it's not you. It's the parasites and bacteria inside your body that are literally taking over your mind. That's mind control right. by a bacteria. That's amazing. Yes. That whenever you can, parasites crave sugar, cancer craves sugar, but guess what cancer is? It's parasites. So they're craving that sugar and you just have every day you like, I have to find sugar right now. I have to. And sometimes it's in particular a certain kind. That's a, a likely, that's a telltale sign that you might have a, a parasite or parasites that need to be cleaned up. And, or sometimes they can crave alcohol or whatever the case is. Like it, you're a hundred percent right. So when the parasites crave it, you think it's your own craving, but it's actually not. So that should, that's a, that's a high level of mind control, you know, that's, and that's, so I think Scott was saying, could it have been a weaponized technology that these things are actually a weaponized technology that are in they, they show that in the series Stargate SG-1, like the entire series is based on parasites and how when the parasite uh, gets in somebody, it controls them and it takes over and controls their mind. And there's a bunch of episodes on it. And then uh, who are those parasites? Well, that's it. Whenever I was, <laughs> so whenever I was, I have to share this. Don't judge, you can judge me if you want, but I went on a mushroom trip. Um, one time I ate some mushrooms and I have way stronger than I thought. And I immediately went to like the dark realm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I saw, um, I saw, first of all, I saw Enki or who, who identified himself as Lucifer. He told he, he was, uh, Enki mm -hmm. Lucifer. I was like, this was a, a while back. Um, that's why whenever a certain person came out saying that, you know, Anki's coming back, I'm like, I don't know about that. But um, anyway, it wasn't, I saw like, um, I saw Anki, I saw Lucifer and he identified himself as Anki. I'm sorry. Then I also saw, um, oh my God, uh, Cerberus, the three headed dog that guards the gates of hell. And I was in this really dark realm and all of a sudden like these, they were, I was having a conversation with them and they showed me 
a vision of the entire planet and they were telling me how they control the world via parasites and they showed me through everybody like through the skin as if they were transparent and there was just an infinite number of parasites just infested like the entire planet the people everything and then that's what they were relying on to control the world is via the parasites and that's another reason i think that they're pushing these insects because insects are insects. If we're infested with parasites, insects are worse. You start grinding up these par these insects and then feed them to us. Um, I don't understand how it works, but it can't be a good thing. And they're, you know, again, they're trying to replace the protein and that's a part of the scam. It's all a psychological trick, but either way, I was shown a vision of these parasites. That's how they control the world is via parasites. Now it was mushroom trip. I, I get it. And you don't have to take, take it all with a grain of salt, but it, it was impactful to me at the time. Well, we discussed mushrooms because mushrooms have a voice, right? And they are in charge of the tree system. They're helping the tree system. Yes, um, the fungi. So yeah. Scott spoke on that last week as well about, I, I mean, I understood that they were a part of the tree system, like the wood wide web, how these trees are talking, but that I never took it that the mushrooms were in control, but I think they have more control than we thought based on what Scott was saying. So, I mean, you just cracked open a whole nother side of things. And that's what we were trying to get at last week is who's in control of the parasites and well, I, I I don't know who's in control of the parasites and, well, you unless kind of just said you know one one giant parasite is control and control the rest of them right uh, yeah. but that's how but that's definitely in my opinion how they control the politicians um, mm -hmm. they definitely control the pol it's a parasitic consciousness and it's a consensus reality that they exist in like I talked about earlier that movie um, Dreamcatcher have you seen that Dreamcatcher I don't know. They he had to get to the water and and to spread that bacteria into the water system. Um, the there's a little guy, special education oh. guy named Duditz, but Duditz is from another planet and he has powers. And they all were gifted some of his powers when they saved him. You got to check out Dreamcatcher, but it yeah, is just like what you're saying too. Like it, and it has to be spread into the water system so that everybody can get it. And then you see people looking and acting strange, but then when they burst open, it's like this big giant parasite. And then it's giving birth to all these little tiny parasites. And mm -hmm. it was, was like a really good movie. Y'all. When I did my yeah, first parasite. Great. Yeah. When I, when I did my first parasite cleanse, um, I only did it because the universe throws things in your face when it's time. Every people were just randomly sending me these videos and these interviews about parasite cleanses. And I was never interested, right? I'm like, I don't care what, par whatever, I'm, I'm not doing that. But it just kept showing up in my awareness everywhere I turn, like every day, something about parasite cleanse till I finally had a dream where I like saw, I was shown this dis computer display and it was like this emergency flashing light and it's going eh, 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 and it said parasite detected parasite detected and i woke up and i was like I, I i felt it in my core i was like i need to do a parasite cleanse something's taking over here something's wrong when i finally did it like i was i had to i had to have been so infested that when i the very first night like some people explain their testimonies and stuff and it doesn't affect them immediately i did when i took the most minute dosage of what i was supposed to take on the first day of the protocol i mean my body reacted i started sweating i started getting sick but my body was purging it was such a bad infestation i think that my body immediately had this this reaction but it ultimately it was a, a beautiful thing because after the end of that protocol i felt like a different person like sometimes you're just lethargic you don't know why you don't have energy um you can't really find purpose or whatever like do a parasite cleanse. It might, it might, or and or will change your life. Hey, Tyler, uh, I, I took I took one I took one years ago, but uh, I don't remember the protocol. Do you know of a good protocol to use for a parasite yeah. cleanse? There's a number of them I've come across, and I've tried three different protocols by now. Um, the one is the uh, chlorine dioxide the MMS. Uh, that's the yeah. most effective one, in my opinion, the two part um, A and B dosage, and you got to mix it up and it's like a little chemistry experiment. But 
um, there's a whole protocol. It, it would be hard for me to explain it all, but there is a process. You need to take the, you first, first of all, you're supposed to start on the full moon because for some reason that's when the parasites come out on the full moon. So you start on the full moon and then you, uh, there's this thing called a, um, mimosa pudica or like a wormwood type of, uh, supplement that actually neutralizes, paralyzes the, the, uh, the parasites, because if you don't do that, you just try and kill them with the MMS or the chlorine dioxide. It actually doesn't kill them. They actually, they, they latch on even harder and it doesn't remove them. So you have to first paralyze them, wait for the full moon. You take the mimosa pudica in the morning, you paralyze them. And then, then you do your protocol, you drink that stuff all day. And at the end of the day, you, you take the, what they call a biotoxin binder. There's other, uh, there's other brands of it, but what it does is it helps flush out the die off that's in your body. So all the dead parasites that that it helps move them out. And then it's a constant, you know, you do it for 21 days. You take a couple days off, you do it for another 21 days. You're supposed to do it for three, three protocols in a row. Um, I didn't do the same protocol every time. I actually tried something different the second time. I've never strictly done the uh, the one I'm talking about. There you go, Mimosa Pudica. Hmm. Now yeah. that's that's what that's what that's what neutralizes them, but that's not actually going to kill them. Like there's like that's the thing that people don't understand. Uh, Alexia Alexia Eisenhower. She is the best person I know to to go to for parasite cleanses. I've learned everything I know from her. Oh my um, gosh. Okay, so your ammonia gets off. So something just clicked. But uh, would you say zeolite and charcoal, activated charcoal? Like, There's a number of things that work and help. Um, there's so many different protocols out there. I can't, I'm not an expert. I can't tell you what does yeah. or doesn't work. I can just tell you what I've used. Um, and like I said, Alexia Eisenhower, if you want to have her on the show and just give you the rundown, that's your girl. Uh, but it's not just, that's the trick. People go online and they see a pill, a bottle, Oh, parasite cleanse. Like it's not just that simple. There is a protocol and it, and a diet change that comes along with it. You know, you can't be like eating this, all these sugars at the same time while you're trying to, um, uh, you know, p- cleanse yourself from these parasites. And then even like antioxidant, like teas, and there's certain things that you, that typically are good for you, but you want to stay away from during the cleanse because for certain reasons, I'm not an expert. I'm just, I just know, cause I've done a few of them myself and it's probably, I'm probably due for another one, to be honest. Yeah. I think we all are. I think that's maybe something we just need to hit on. Right. And and then that's another thing really quick, the meats, like the meats that they're selling in the grocery store, uh, they are a lot of times pork in particular, they can be infested with parasites. So you don't even, you don't even understand. Like if you've seen those videos of somebody will buy a piece of pork for off the grocery store shelf, they'll come home and just pour like Coca-Cola on it or something. And these little parasites just come crawling out of it. Like that's, we're eating that shit. You know, if you're, if, but not every piece of meat does it right. Cause some are clean, but if it's, it's, de- it's flesh, it's dead flesh. Right. And what happens when an animal dies immediately, the parasites take over. Right. So if that's another reason to make sure that your meat is ethically sourced. So that was amazing. Informative. I don't know if anybody else has any questions. We working you like you got a job today. I, oh, man. And I wasn't even ready for this. I, I was, I thought we were recording tonight. Well, we're recording, but you know, uh, it'll be released at a later time. Yeah, that, no, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just pumped. I'm excited that you're here. Um, I'm glad we're getting all this nonsense behind us. One thing I admire about you is no matter what criticism you reach, the first thing first, you are bold and courageous, standing in your truth, standing up for what you believe in and unafraid to say what you really think. So I respect you and admire you for that. And my second thought is for you and anybody else, no one is going to 100% like us. You know, everybody, we're not here to be liked by everybody. And I think people have a real hard time with that. 
Right. It's like we want to judge everybody, but then we want everybody to love us and follow us and be on our team. And guess what? It, it just doesn't work like that. 30% of people love you. 30% of people literally hate you. The rest don't really give a damn. And uh, even, you know, you're going to have cheerleaders and that's awesome. But you know, you might have haters that sit on the fence and just watch and criticize, but all of that stuff is required for you to move forward. Are you going to be a champion or are you going to, you know, just fall over every time somebody says, boo, you know, we cannot right. run around here as people pleasers. And I just don't see you as that type of person. Well, guess what? I was though. It took me a lot to finally find my voice and unblock that um, uh, throat chakra. What's the chakra name? Oh, the throat chakra, whatever. I don't know. Um, to unblock that, it took me a lot. Like I used to be a people pleaser. I used to be afraid of conflict and to stand up for myself. And that was a long journey. But then when you finally start speaking your truth and you stand up for yourself, when it comes from a place of truth, not when you're trying to argue and like just yell for the sake of arguing, right? That's different. But when you finally stand up and just don't take any more bullshit, for one, you it's amazing. It's empowering. You feel, uh, you feel great about yourself for the first time ever. Like you're taking your power back, but for two, you're going to create enemies. Not that you don't like those people, but a lot of people don't like to hear the truth. A lot of people go, go around being the way they are and they're never called out on their bullshit. So when you finally call them out, all of a sudden they have to, at all costs, paint you as the enemy because they're afraid of themselves. They never looked at themselves in the mirror. So that's what we that's what we see happening right now. As soon as you start observing what's going on and start telling people what you see and that you start sharing at least the truth as you see it, um, it's going to trigger the hell out of a lot of people. And they're going to, by default, uh, paint you as the enemy because you've seen their true colors and oh, no, we better we better hush, we better silence this guy because I'll be found out if we don't. It's a it's a sign. It's a clear sign when you speak the truth, period. And then when you speak truth. Your truth or when you just speak truth, if people don't like it, it's a sign that they've been benefiting in some way. And they you, you know, they want to avoid losing whatever that is, whether it's been oppressing you, using you for money, using you for clout, whatever it is that they're using you for. But whenever you remove that, you're going to see people, they're not going to like you so much. But it's right. Shuda. Is that what you mean? Vishuda, the Indian word? The throat chakra? They call oh, it. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. But the throat chakra, yeah. yeah. I mean, it took, and that it wasn't until recently, like a year ago, where I finally, finally felt like I stepped into that power. Like when I had to kick those guys out of our conference last year. Um, a part of me was actually scared of the confrontation for some reason. Like, I don't know why it was just some internal inner child thing. Um, and I just like something came over me and I just stood in my power and just told these guys what was up and I kicked them out and I stood my ground and I, my voice wasn't shaking like it would have in the past. And I was just like so firm in it. And it, cause I know those guys were just, they didn't belong. And, um, it was, a, it was the most amazing, empowering thing. And it was like a life-changing moment for me. I felt so good because I know I, what I wanted to say, but I never, in past situations, I never had the balls to say it. It's something that I've been working on over and over. Like we know, we don't all just naturally have that in us. Like that's part of this journey as well. And like, I'm not sitting here proud that I kicked these guys, being proud that I kicked these guys out. I wish I didn't have to do that, but they were there, um, with an ulterior motive under false pretensions. I mean, they were, uh, they were not who they said they were. So it, it was time for them to go anyway. I will venture to say that like, like for me, when I had, I was a super overgiver until I had my son. And then I had to start looking to say, if I give this much to other people, then I'm taken away from my son. And we approach life differently when we have something or some people to protect. And so the things we can't do for ourselves, sometimes we, 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 the, the fact that we're taking care of other people gives us the courage to do these things. And right. so as we're out here talking and helping people and encouraging other people to be empowered, this is, you know, what we're considering 
We're considering every word that comes out of our mouth and we're listening to what other people are saying and making sure like, hey, wait, no, we can't spread this amongst the population when it's not true and it's not right. And so we're gonna have to each be able to point things out and stand up on our own. And I just like for people, if you're gonna write, write, or if you wanna start a channel, start a channel, but open your mouth and don't allow you know yourself to be one person that just listens to all the voices. Cause we're not here talking because we just want to be heard and we're not sitting here talking because we're going to make buku money. We're doing it because we love it and we believe in what we're doing. And I mm-hmm. encourage other people to do it because the sitting down and the not opening your mouth, that's what it takes for the bad to take over. It takes for good people to do nothing for bad people to take over the whole damn thing. Cause bad people have enough ego that they want to be up front and they will push everybody's voices out. So we can't they rely. They rely on our obedience. Yeah. yeah they, our submit, they, they want us to submit. They said right. that's why most women get attacked. Like uh, this woman, one day she was driving with her door unlocked and the man came in and said, hey, take me to this place. She was so afraid to scream, yell or kick him out. Why? Because you just don't want to don't want to make noise. And it's OK for us to take up space and make noise. Yeah. Right. Right. You well, Terry, you did you have anything, it. Scott? Everybody's good. We well, had an app. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, I, I'm just going to say, um, all everything that we've discussed today has just been so um, enlightening. To you know, like it, it makes you think. You, you have to stop and think about how do we proceed you know, each day you know like do we comply with what's being said or do we take the the initiative to just say no I don't believe this is this is the way that I want to move just because this is the consensus I have to follow my own path and and maybe it isn't the most popular maybe I'm not going to be popular with my friends and family but this is what I believe. And so you have to go with your, what, what, right. You, you know, what moves you, what's your heart telling you, not what your brain is telling you, because that the, can be manipulated. But when we go into our heart, you can't manipulate that feeling from the heart. Right. The, I mean, the less popular you are, the probably more in alignment you are. If I, I would have to say, um, you push a lot of people away when you start sharing your truth like i said earlier and like going back to the money thing like if we're in this for the money this is the wrong (laughs) business to be in like i would be out there i could create a channel i see the channels that the algorithm promotes i know what to create if i wanted if i'm just in it to make money and put it put out content so i can make a living that's not what this is about tyler would put on a wig and start talking like a black woman if he wanted to really make some money because right. that's what's really selling right now is that ridiculous. Everybody wants to put on a damn dress and a wig and a, bonnet. Or a mask, yeah, or a mask or a, or a bonnet. Right. <laughs> Anyone out there who's like going out of their way to um, create channels to call out other people, ultimately, um, that's their own insecurity. It's their it's them coming from an unhealed place, yeah. and they're stepping. They're what they're doing is they're stepping on the backs of others to build themselves up because. They're not confident within themselves to do it on their own. So they, you know, they're taking advantage of other people's, um, when, when other people fall, they take advantage of it and they're opportunists. Unfortunately, that's, that's what runs the world is a bunch of opportunists. They don't care if it, if it's good intentioned or bad intentioned, if it's an opportunity that can get them any fame, feed their ego, make them money, they're going to jump on it regardless of the, uh, circumstances. Jonathan. Yeah, I mean, in that context right there, you come back, we were just talking about the parasites, and you can really see where people get triggered. And it's, you know, part of the that conic parasite. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. so it's, it's, and again, it's like coming from our heart, like Terry is saying, doing what we feel is right with our prime directive. What is, why, why are we here? And just holding that truth exactly, and no matter if it's you know un the unpopular and people are are 
engaging and trying to trigger us or trying to uh, take our power, but stand in our power, speak our truth and express the way we need to express. We all express differently, but find that creative spark. But, you know, uh, but at the same time, there's, they're going to start to realize how duped they were. Like I, I just had a, a childhood friend that, you know, two years ago, you know, cussed me out and about the whole pandemic and the whole jab and everything like that. And, you know, you know, his mom just passed away like two, three weeks ago, you know? And so he came back and he apologized. He's like, you know, I owe you such an apology for, you know, pressing you out and about the whole thing. He's like, I see that it was all a smoke screen and oh, wow. really after. So there's going to be more of that and more of those people that are going to come to us and they're going to be looking for, you know, that support and that information and what, what's next. And, and at the same time, it's, it's a progression, right? It's another progression of a healing journey for people. So, um, you know, it's just to, yeah, to keep sharing the information and doing what we're doing, right? Yeah. So many times people, you, we really have to get to this point where if nobody else was doing the right thing, would you still do it? Uh, get, get rooted into your foundational beliefs. Who are you? What do you really believe? And then, you know, stop trying to align with other people and figure out if people align with you. Because I think people, like you said, they want to be a part of a group, want to feel a part of something big. So they'll give up all their thoughts of what they know is right just to be a part of a group. Mm-hmm. And I used to, I do, I grew up doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I grew up doing that. I yeah. just, I never fit in anywhere in school. So I just became somebody I wasn't to fit into all at the popular group, you know? And, uh, and it's going back to what you said, like, are you going to do the right thing? Even if no one's watching or not, like, mm-hmm. are you still like, that's the thing. Some people, I see all these videos where these people set up these scenarios so they can donate to the homeless person or give them something. And then they receive all this praise in the comment section and this and that. I'm like, would you have done the same thing if it wasn't being filmed and put on social media for millions of people to see, or were you doing it for your own and for for your own good instead of them? You know, like, I always wonder that, like, would you do the same thing if there were no cameras on you and no one was watching Mm -hmm. that tells you who someone is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to end this. And I thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, thank you, Jonathan, for coming back to work. Oh, Scott, did you want to say something? Or are you good to go there? No, I'm just excited for uh, a couple of months from now, about a month or so now. Right? So I'm excited. Yeah. I can't wait. Looking yeah. forward to seeing you there. Yeah, one month and a few days. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to end this here.